Waterboy with the five, you missed my last super. Also, I really hope Phil and the Xbox can turn this mess around. The thing is, dude, it's like, even if they do turn it around, it'll be five to ten years before it happens because of how, like, this is the thing is, all these developers have blown their fucking wads at Bethesda. Like, Starfield will be the game we get from Todd Howard's team for the next five to ten years. Um, Arcane's not going to be putting anything else out because they already released Redfall and Deathloop. Tango Gameworks just released um, Ghostwire Tokyo and Hi-Fi Rush. So Bethesda's basically tapped out except it was, like id Software and Machine Games. Machine Games is working on an Indiana Jones game, which, you know, that could be very hit or miss, I feel like. And id, it's been three years since their last game and nothing's been fucking sad coming from them. So, the thing is, it's like, even if they do turn it around, it's going to be like a decade. Minimum. I mean, the Coalition we've heard nothing from. 343 is not going to release another Halo game for probably another five years. So, just buckle in. We got a long fucking road ahead. And Waterboy with the 5, if you want, you can watch my recommended tomorrow so you don't have to worry about squeezing it in. Yeah, we'll see how we're doing on time, but that'll probably be the most likely case. Appreciate it, man. Nasty Wasky with the 2, they need to bring back the 360 guy. He's, yeah, Don Matrick was way better. <laughs> 100%. That's what Colt claims that id Software did the fucking combat for Redfall, but I don't believe that. I don't fucking believe that for a second, dude. That game looks like absolute horseshit. The gameplay for that game is so fucking slow and clunky, there's no way. Griff, you should carry the... T Bro. I would love to be the head of Xbox, but the only problem is, is I would be insanely underqualified and there's not a fucking fat chance I'd ever get a fucking job. New Generation with the 5, you should check out iDub's new video. He's so sad. We'll probably do it tomorrow. Yeah, that's the thing, bro. It's not easy to just reach into a fucking hat of names and pull out a new fucking CEO of a major company like Xbox. Like, believe it or not, it is actually a hard job to manage a 10,000 plus person company with, what, tens of thousands of contract workers? Like, it's not just, oh, I want to make Halo. Make it. Like, you got to do a lot of other shit. I would bring back the frat bro fucking game developer culture. That would be it, man. Like, all these people love to talk about how toxic the gaming workplaces used to be, but it's like, bro, people made good fucking shit back then. So if that's what it takes, sign me the fuck up. Yeah, the fact that he admitted that they didn't even send anyone over to work on Starfield even after- Or not Starfield, uh, Redfall. Even after they delayed the game for over a fucking year is pitiful. And the fact that they knew that game was not gonna run at 60 FPS for over six months and still chose to, like, fucking mislead people with the, uh, you know, 
marketing material for that game. And then on top of it, they flew out a bunch of shill influencers like Colt Eastwood, who fucking lied about his experience with the game. You know, hiding the fact that the game ran like absolute shit, even on PC. So... That's what I mean, man. It's it's like it's Microsoft's fault, but then you have fucking enablers like Colt and the fucking shills that sell out just so they can get a little bit of access. Oh, fuck, man. I thought I had that. Shit. They didn't even care enough to send resources over to the studio to make sure that game fucking worked. And Phil's going with the whole narrative that, you know, Xbox doesn't have any involvement with Bethesda. It's like, oh, bullshit, dude. Bullshit. Yeah, I just bought a new business unit for $7 billion. Do you know what I'm going to do? Not check in on them. Bruh. Like, he literally admitted that good games are not important to Microsoft's, like, business strategy. They just want to release a bunch of, like, high 70s, low indie, or fucking high 70s, low 80s, like, indie tier garbage. Like, that's what they want to fucking pump into Game Pass. And that's all they fucking care about, bro. That shit is pitiful. To come out when you're selling a console saying that good games don't fucking sell consoles is a joke. Like, what the fuck, man? Why would you go buy an Xbox right now? Why would you go buy an Xbox after the fucking guy who's supposed to be selling it to you literally says that even if we release Starfield and it's an 11 out of 10 we aren't going to gain any market share. It's like, are you fucking joking? Dude, do you know how many motherfuckers went out there and bought a fucking PlayStation just because Hogsnort's Begacy was advertised as a PlayStation game? Do you know how many motherfuckers went and bought a PS4 for fucking Spider-Man? There's a, like, there are certain games 100% that people will go out and buy a console for. It's just Microsoft, like bro, people literally bought an Xbox for Halo 2. That's what I just can't fucking believe, man. It's like the whole reason the fucking Xbox console even fucking exists is because of the Halo IP. Like bro, that hype behind Halo 2 is what propelled the 360 into fucking dominating that next generation. Because everybody was so fucking hyped about Halo 2. Like, that multiplayer experience was so fucking incredible that everybody was so hyped for Halo 3 on the Xbox 360. And then he goes like, well, nowadays it's impossible to win back market share. It's like, no, it's fucking not. Dude, Look at the Wii U versus the Switch and tell me that it's impossible to win back market share. Like, the fuck? Look at the Wii U's success compared to the Switch's success. If you can even call the Wii U's success, success. And then what I took away from that, too, is him literally saying the Game Pass isn't even worth buying a console for. So they, they just don't care, bro. Like, it just sounds like they've given up. 
in all honesty. Like, literally every single idea was basically shot down in the course of that interview. DBM Gaming with the 3 Xbox Series L. For real, man. Missed naming opportunity. It's just wild, bro. But he goes like, I want our console users to feel like first class citizens. And it's like, bro, you keep saying that, but your own fucking studio, Bethesda, released Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo after both of those games being on the PlayStation 5 exclusively for a fucking year. When they finally came to Game Pass, they ran worse than the PlayStation 5 version after having a fucking year to optimize it. You release a game like fucking Redfall, your first AAA, next generation only title, and it literally is garbage. It's a broken, buggy, unfinished piece of crap. And you want Xbox players to feel like first class citizen. Like, one of these things is not like the fucking other, dude. One of these things is not like the fucking other. And then he uses the excuse, well, every publisher puts out games that get 60s. And it's like, bro, name one PlayStation game that was a triple A fucking first party studio that released for 70 fucking dollars that scored a 60. Or I think it's now down to a 59. It's surpassed Crackdown 3 as Microsoft's worst game. So, bro, what PlayStation game has come out at a 59 Metacritic and 1.6 fucking user score? <laughs> that was a full 70 bucks. Like, what new fucking IP has PlayStation put out that is that fucking poorly received? Godfall wasn't a PlayStation game. That was Gearbox. AKA Embracer Group. For Spoken Square Enix, not PlayStation. Yep, Redfall is officially under Crackdown 3 by a whopping one point. What they came out with this year for PlayStation Nothing so far, uh, they released that big DLC for Horizon, which is apparently better than the base game. They're about to release Final Fantasy 16, that looks like probably the best game this generation thus far. Uh, then later this year, we're probably getting Spider-Man 2. So, what do you mean, what is Sony releasing? They got plenty of shit coming. Yeah, I think Wolverine's 2024, they said. Or, that's the rumor. That's the one I'm looking forward to, personally, because it's going to be a linear, gory fucking Wolverine game. That's going to be pretty lit. At least I feel like. That's got potential, man. Oh, yeah, they got Stellar Blade as well, too. Hell yeah, bro. The assets. Those top-tier visual assets, bro.
In all fairness, Final Fantasy 16 is the only thing you named that shouldn't get you beaten to... Wait. Shouldn't get you the death penalty for... What the fuck? Bro, Spider-Man 2 is going to be bigger than pretty much any game that comes out this year, if it does release this year. Like, it's going to be up there with COD, bro. Easily. Spider-Man 2 is probably going to be, like, in the top three or four top-selling games of 2023 when it comes out. That shit is going to be fucking massive. Like, y'all are forgetting the first one sold 30 million copies. And that's a fucking, like, PlayStation 4 exclusive for the majority of its life cycle. So, 30... Like, what? what's that now? Like, 35 million now that it came out on PC? So, bro, most AAA, like, multi-plats don't sell 30 fucking million copies. I think Skyrim, after having, like, what, nine different releases, sold 50 million copies. So, that's, like, a fucking insane number, dude. Like, that's very impressive. Sales, laugh my ass off, but how long will it be played for? I mean, how long did you play Hi-Fi Rush, bro? Real talk. The full six hours, or did you drop it after two like most people? I think Final Fantasy 7 Part 2 is coming this year. I would not expect that, personally. That's pretty ambitious for them to release 16 and then Final Fantasy 7 Part 2 the same year. I understand why they want to release Final Fantasy 7 Part 2 this year, because it's the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy 7 this year, technically. Because they're doing like a bunch of shit to celebrate it. Like, I got these uh, card portfolio thingies that are, like, the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII. Um, like, promos or whatever the fuck that just came out. Why would they build the whole game, bro? They're getting people to spend like 200 bucks on three separate parts of one game. Like, that shit's actually really fucking smart. But they're like stretching the game out to be the length of three full games. Which I think is cool, personally. Like, more Final Fantasy is something I'm never gonna bitch about. That's a fat dub. So, weaponized autism of the two. Finally, I'm done with classes for a week. Nice, man. Enjoy your break. Blues 18 of the five. Did you know today is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs a bill allowing death penalty for child rapists? Give me some hope for America. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's, well, the unfortunate thing is, is like, you still have to go through like the legal process, which is like 10 fucking years to actually kill somebody. So they still cost the taxpayers a shit ton of money before you can actually fucking kill them. I mean, I really wish we could just pass a law where it's like you catch somebody in the act of doing something and you have body cam footage, you just can put them up against a wall and fucking shoot them. <laughs> like, honestly. That shit would be so much better. But that's good that they're killing them and not keeping them in prison for life. DBM Gaming with the three. What's going on, bro? What are we doing tonight? The uh, Phil Spencer interview, mostly. It's pretty long. And Bamaham Yum with the five. To counter his games, don't sell argument. In 2018, I had an Xbox One, which I hated, so I sold it to get a PS4 because I wanted to play Spider-Man and got it. Thank you. I knew a bunch of people personally that bought a fucking PlayStation just to play fucking Spider-Man. 100%. 
Yeah, Spider-Man's one of those characters that, like... I mean, same thing with Arkham, bro. Like, one of my friends in high school, like, the only fucking game he would play is MLB The Show. But when Batman Arkham came out, that was, like, the only other game he fucking played, dude. That was it, because he was, like, a huge Batman fan, apparently. Like, that was literally it. Like, literally just would play MLB The Show, like, 24 fucking 7 otherwise. And then love the Batman Arkham games. So there are certain games and, like, franchises and characters that get fucking normies into, like, gaming or a particular platform. And, like, Batman, Spider-Man tier characters will 100% do that shit. IV with the 5, bro. I bought a 4080 and it came with a Steam code for Redfall. I won't even bother downloading the game. NVIDIA is giving out garbage games. Well, the thing is, is Microsoft gives that shit out. They just bundle it in there for free, basically. Usually the game developers do that type of stuff because it's like free promo. They'll include it. DBM Gaming with the 15. Can't believe the fall from grace Microsoft has had. 360 golden age of new ideas and strong new IPs. Plenty of garbage games. But they took more risk and first parties were more frequent and polished. 100%. And the output was crazy too, dude. We got like what? Three, four? No. Eh, I don't really count ODST as a Halo game. So, yeah. We got three Halo games. We got four Gears of War games. We got, what, like five Forza games. We got three Fable games. We got, what else? I mean, there's a bunch of shit that came out during the 360. Now we get, like, one Halo game every generation. We got two Gears games last generation, but both of them were, unfortunately, very mid. But, you know, Forza is their only consistent series now, but it's like, how many fucking times can you play the same racing game with slightly better graphics? Wow, I came in at a trash opinion. You don't count ODST as a Halo game? Fuck no, it was like a DLC they charged 60 bucks for. That shit was trash, bro. Literally was just like fucking Halo 3's multiplayer bundled with a worse campaign. <laughs> like, yeah, that shit is not a real Halo game. That's like a shitty overpriced DLC. Galaxy Fur with the 5 Xbox division officially in the classified ads for sale. Well, not after that interview today, man, because the way Phil Spencer was describing it, why would anyone want to be running Xbox? Why would you ever want to buy into it? Uh, slightly used studios, free um, excess Xbox warehouse stock will even include one Phil Spencer. That's right, man. So that way you can stay. Gaming. Isaac Hemler with the two, the will of Phil said you will get Game Pass fodder and you will be happy. I mean, that's basic, bro. Good games don't sell consoles because apparently nobody buys fucking consoles for video games anymore, guys. That's a new concept. <laughs> Fuck, man. Weaponized autism with the two. I wanted to get Spider-Man PS4, but I got a Switch. The Switch is the better choice, personally. Timothy Marco with the five. The libs of Twitter think that new Florida law from DeSantis will bleed over to trans people. Well, if they rape kids, it should. It doesn't really fucking matter if you're a uh, gay, straight, trans, or whatever the fuck. If you rape a kid, um, you know, a bullet in the back of the head is the only cure. So if you don't want to get killed, don't rape kids. Pretty simple.
Even Star with the seven. Now that you said Fable, it's almost three years since they announced it. Still no update. Elden Ring came out two to five years after it was announced. What the fuck? Yeah, and apparently the Fable game's in development hell because they're trying to get it to run on the Forza Horizon engine. So, yeah. Instead of Unreal Engine or whatever the fuck they would typically use. So they're trying to get it to run in the fucking Forza engine, which <laughs> we know how well Microsoft's fucking, uh, I guess, homegrown engines work. Look at the fucking Halo engine. Yeah, that Fable game's gonna be woke, 100%. The humor was what made Fable so entertaining, I feel like, because it was kind of a slower game. Oh, is Redfall down to a 57 now? Is that PC or Xbox? I saw it went down to 59 on Xbox, so it's officially lower than Crackdown. What about Gears of War 6? The sad thing is, man, is after Gears 4 and 5, I have zero interest in Gears 6. It's like me being excited for a Disney Star Wars movie at this point. It ain't gonna happen. Like, bro, Gears, like, 4 and 5 literally have the plot of the fucking Disney sequel movies of Star Wars, if you really look at them. It's about a girl whose grandparent is the big bad of the original trilogy. She goes on a mission to find out more about her and her past. And then eventually, you know, defies her family lineage to save the day. Like, it's literally the same fucking shit, bruh. Same shit as Star Wars. Or Star Horrors, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck thought adding an open world to Gears of War was a good fucking idea. If anything, they should have, like, upped the fucking brutality from... Like, this is the thing. Is Gears of War 4 was not a bad campaign. The campaign was actually enjoyable from a pure gameplay perspective, other than those stupid fucking robots. Which, why the fuck are we killing robots in Gears of War? Isn't the whole point of, like fucking Gears of War to chainsaw motherfuckers in half? Like, why do I want to chainsaw a dude who's made of fucking metal and doesn't have blood and guts? Like, that's boring. So, if anything, they should have just taken Gears 4, cranked up the fucking intensity, put more blood, more fucking gore, brought back, like, that weight that the original trilogy had, and Gears 5 could have been actually pretty decent. Because you wouldn't have to fight the fucking robots anymore. But no, they turned it into a fucking Sony game. Open world garbage, female lead, emotional story. Like, fuck that shit, man. Fuck that. Isn't it ironic that the game that people consider to be a dude bro stere like stereotype has a more deep and meaningful story than 99% of video games today? Like, everybody gave the original Gears trilogy, like, shit for being, um, you know, just the generic dude bro third person shooter. Be like, oh, it's such a tired concept. And it's like, shut the fuck up, hoes. Like, dude, Gears 2 and 3 had more emotional fucking moments than 99% of these fucking story games could ever fucking hope to. So that's what I mean, bro. It's like, we have given up the best part of gaming to chase this stupid fucking gay shit. Like, oh my god, emotional storytelling is really important in games, because, you know, we're not just playing video games, we're changing lives.
because when I played the original Gears of War trilogy, you know, my first thought was, damn, I sure wish I was playing as some, you know, college age fucking bratty um, chick who can't shut the fuck up. Because that's exactly what I want out of a Gears of War game, guys. You know, not fucking brothers to the end. I want fucking, you know, <laughs> some fucking pissy little fucking bitch complaining all the fucking time. Weaponized autism of the two, I blame Half-Life and The Last of Us. I've never understood, like, bro, I tried that Black Mesa game or whatever, which is supposed to be, like, Half-Life updated. That shit sucks, bro. I have never understood the hype for Half-Life. Timothy Marco of the two, they think it'll be an excuse for trans genocide. Guess we'll find out, right? Daryl Zone with the two. Griffin Love, Emotional Games. That's right. I love them. Yeah, Half-Life was really fucking bad in my opinion. I, I really don't understand the hype for that game. I did not enjoy it at all. I spent a decent amount of time playing it too, but holy fuck, it was boring. <laughs> it was so fucking boring. Yeah, the Portal games are great. But Half-Life? Hell no. Nah. Portal's great, though. That's my favorite Valve game, is Portal. Easily. No, I hate Half-Life because I played it and it was boring. It's a boomer shooter. I'm not a fan. Is Although, would you even call... I mean, I guess you could call it a shooter, but it's more of like fucking Wrench Simulator. Vesnio of the Five, what made the emotional moments in the OG trilogy of Gears of War was that they were rare, and when it happened, it isn't overindulgent. Yep, and you actually gave a fuck about the characters because they were cool and interesting, and they weren't just like these fucking, you know, annoying ass bitches or lifeless fucking hunks of meat that have zero fucking personality. Actually, it's a crowbar. Oh no, dude. It was so memorable, I couldn't even remember the fucking tool. Yeah, if I had to pick between the two, I would say Gears 4 is definitely better than 5. Because at least it stayed true to the actual Gears of War formula, campaign-wise. 
Weaponized Autism with the two. Half-Life is Quake, but 200% slower. It's Blasphemy. There you go. Shit is pretty bad. Yeah, Fear was pretty good back in the day. I had all three of them. They were pretty fun. There was a lot of really unique shooters back in that era, which was fun. Being a shooter fan myself. Yeah, The Darkness was a really cool game. I mean, you had Bioshock, obviously. Borderlands was still good. I'm trying to think what else, man. There was a lot of stuff. That Syndicate game was pretty cool. Battlefield was still good back then. The Medal of Honor first reboot was good. Um, bro, I remember how shitty Homefront was. That game was absolute fucking dog shit. Isaac Himmler with the two. Coltrane had the best arc in Gears 3. Yeah, Coltrane was a fucking legend, bro. 100%. I'm an Ellie! Uh, ah, yeah, I tried to play the, like, Prey, whatever the fuck, reboot, or whatever the hell you want to call that. I didn't like it. I thought it was really boring, personally. I'm playing Redfall now and can't stop playing it. Do you have a gun to your head, man? Do you need us to call for help? Hope everything's okay. Blink twice if you need help. Yo, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand is actually a really valuable game nowadays. <laughs> I had that game. I wish I would have held on to it. It's worth quite a bit. I remember you could get it for like five bucks at Best Buy at one point. Now it's a pretty pricey game. They made two 50 cent games. Redfall is pretty good so far. Bruh. It has good graphics. Bruh. Gameplay. Bruh. And voice acting. Bruh. It's also free on Game Pass, so it's a steal. Bruh. 
I suggest everyone here play it. Bruh. <laughs> Great bait, mate. Timothy Marco with a two. It also has top tier shooting mechanics. That's right, man. Gaming. Yeah, I know. A lot of people are going to download it just to see how bad it is. But the thing is, is I don't even want to fucking do that shit because, like, they're going to use that number to be like, Oh, well, actually, five million people played Redfall. And it's like, bro, how many people have actually fucking liked it? It's like, seriously? So I'm not even going to give them the fucking ability to claim my download as a quote-unquote player. It's like people who hate watched that fucking Velma show on HBO. Enough people shit on it, but still watched it, that it's getting a season two. Because a bunch of people fucking hate watched it. So, guess what? Still made money. It drove viewer f fucking viewership, man. Twelve hundred people in Redfall, Horizon Zero Dawn is 1,500. Bruh. Damn. Scotty Man with the two, at least Pentiment wasn't broken at launch. Well, there wasn't anything to fucking break. Unless there was a bunch of typos. <laughs> that would be about the only way you could break Pentiment, man, is a bunch of fucking typos. That would literally be it. Yeah, the only reason there's probably that many people playing Redfall on Steam is because of those uh, fucking NVIDIA keys they gave out with GPUs that people got for free. So most people probably didn't even fucking buy the game, they just got it for free with their graphics card. I mean, shit, man. If you're interested in Zelda, I would go ahead and play the ROM as well, too. Like, fuck. Just make sure to buy a copy to support the devs and avoid legal repercussions. I'm not supporting Nintendo. Why? 
Why would you not support Nintendo? I mean, that's like saying, dude, I love eating at a restaurant, but fuck if I'm ever going to pay for that shit. Like, how the fuck do you expect them to exist if you don't fucking pay? It's dumb as fuck, man. It's the same mentality that, you know, all these dumb fucks in Chicago who kept stealing from fucking Walmart. And then Walmart's like, you know what? Fuck it. We're leaving. And now they're all like, oh my god, they're racist. It's like, bruh. No, it's because y'all fucking stole shit, dumbasses. And now all the people who worked at Walmart are losing their fucking jobs, too, so GG well played. Isn't that funny, bro? I mean, you know, like... I just want to say this. That... All Walmart said is, we're closing stores because of theft. That was it. But then the so-called anti-racists equate that with, oh, Walmart hates black people. I wonder how they arrived at the assumption that theft is associated with black people if they're so anti-racist. Just, uh, just an observation for y'all. Because last time, last time I checked, is like it's very possible for every race to steal. So, <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't really sound like Walmart is the racist one in that situation. I don't think Walmart ever released statistics about who steals the most from their stores based on skin color. I think a certain group of people who are anti-racist are now claiming that, you know, because of a certain skin color, it must be that they are the reason for theft. But yeah, I just think that's funny, man. It's like, what the fuck, dude? It's not stealing, it's reparations. Hell yeah, dude. Walmart wronged me. Have you ever had to wait for a return at Walmart? It takes fucking years. Racism isn't real. I wouldn't go that far. There's definitely people who are racist, but they're few and far between in today's world, at least in the U.S. Weaponized autism with the five Groifen. You can't argue with people who try to justify theft. You can only laugh at them. That's why I became an alt-right rumble streamer. They greedy. Hell yeah, dude. 
I heard you can make bank on Rumble though. Like there's a huge fucking like amount of money to be made on that platform. Because like it's so fucking ultra political in a lot of cases that you know motherfuckers just unload money on there. Because they want somebody who like, you know, preaches what they believe, basically. So I guess more power to them. I mean, it's the same with Twitch, dude. People shower Hassan in fucking shekels because he repeats the same dumbass socialist talking points that their broke ass is like, you know. It's all a grift at the end of the day. You know, Hassan will sit in his $3 million house wearing fucking designer clothing that costs more than their entire fucking paycheck and talk to them about how evil capitalism is and how awful it is to be fucking wealthy. It's pretty ironic. Meanwhile, he expects you to shower him in fucking, uh, you know, super berries, bro. Hassan wants you to go work for the capitalist fucking machine so that he can sit on his ass and pretend like it doesn't fucking exist. See, that's the only way socialism works is when you have a bunch of dumbasses feeding you money to sit on your ass all day and do nothing. DBM Gaming of the Three, some people need a spraying low tier god. That's right, bro. 100%. Well, with the two, I laughed when Linus made a commie PC for Hassan. Yeah. I think we watched that on stream, actually. That sounds familiar. It had, like, the hammer and sickle and shit inside, and it, like, allocated power, fucking... I forgot what it was. It was something like that. He, like, set it up to redistribute power or something. I don't fucking know. Or it's like Bernie Sanders ranting about the 1%. Meanwhile, he owns three vacation homes and has $10 million book deals. with a two did you know rappers love trans women griffin i did not which ones in particular the women of course <laughs> i had no idea i guess the mic ain't the only thing they want to get spitting on right Timothy Marco with the two, so many channels, fear mongering over physical media. But dude, they're taking our rights as gamers away. Yeah, wasn't that a thing for a while? I remember there was like some drama on fucking, I think, uh, TikTok or some shit back in like 2020 about like all these so-called straight guys on TikTok who kept like fucking this one uh trans chick. I forgot like I forgot who that was. But there was like this one trans chick that like every one of these like fucking TikTok guys went and fucked. And they all got fucking exposed <laughs> cuz like the person posted the fucking images of the guys like sucking the fucking dick and shit like it's like oh my god it's like bruh because they lied about it or whatever 
No, it wasn't Jeffree Star. I don't think Jeffree Star is quote unquote trans, right? I don't think Jeffree Star is trans. I think he's just gay, right? I didn't think Jeffree Star was trans. I don't fucking know, dude. I don't really keep up to date with the makeup community. No, it wasn't James Charles, bro. It was like a actual like person who had like the fucking... Well, I shouldn't say had the trans surgery because they still had their penis. Um, I think it was... I don't know. I'm not getting into that, but... <laughs> Shit, I really don't care. It's really not that deep. But either way, it was a dude with boobs, basically. It wasn't like a James Charles type. It was like somebody who had like the fucking face surgery... You know, got their rib cage reshaped, got a fucking boob job, all that type of stuff. And, like, they exposed a bunch of these, like, TikTok guys who, like, fucked them. And then the TikTok guys would, like, lie about it, so the person would just, like, post pictures and shit, and it was like... Bruh. But I think that was around like 2020. light yeah they're not doing very well apparently they're having a lot of sales drops i saw like a bunch of people were trying to twist their latest earnings report saying like oh the boycott didn't work it's like you dumb fuckers their fucking quarter ended back in march the drama happened in april like no shit it's not reflected in their current earnings nikita dragon i have no idea More like Nikita dragging my nuts across your face. Who the fuck drinks beer or light beer? Uh, broke college kids that are just looking to get fucking piss hammered for cheap. Like, whenever I would go to the grocery store when I was in college, I would see dudes, like, loading up their fucking cart full of, like, Bud Light, Natural Light, Crystal Light, like, all that gross fucking nasty fucking piss water. Shit sounds nasty, dude. 
freaking natural light. Uh-oh. Yeah, I do not drink fucking beer in general, much less light beer. But yeah, I just don't like beer at all for the most part. Griffin probably drinks wine. Yeah, I like wine. Wine is way better than beer. Like, that's not even close. Duh. Is a women's drink so I guess women can handle more alcohol content than beer drinking men unlucky Most whiskey is fucking trash. The only good type of whiskey is like fucking dry scotch. That's about it. Aside from that, it's pretty nasty. Like any whiskey that has like a sweetness to it is gross. Makes me want to fucking puke. It's like, ugh. Sweet fucking liquor is nasty. Like fucking rum, bourbon. Anything with, like, fucking flavoring added. Gross. Jack Daniels Honey Whiskey? That's probably gayer than wine, bro. That's gayer than wine, I feel like. Yeah, I like tequila. Yeah, wine is class- like, dude, wine is classy. Drinking beer is like, just... Bruh. Do you know what a margarita is in my book? It's like a full fucking thing of tequila with like a little bit of lime juice squirted in there. That's about as much of a margarita as I would drink. <laughs> I don't like mixed drinks at all. Coladas are gross. That's really nasty.
Jack Daniels with Coke? Can't even give up drinking soda when you're drinking, fatty? The fuck? Why do you need Coke with your fucking liquor, man? You just trying to develop a fucking, like, gut? I don't know. Like, here, let me drink some sugary liquid with more sugary liquid. Hell yeah. I like my pizza rolls microwaved, personally, because I like it when the, uh, outside gets soft. I don't like it when it's, like, crunchy. Yeah, if I was gonna have pizza rolls, I would microwave them. I like them when they're kind of soggy. Bro, I haven't had pizza rolls since, like, fuck, man. At least four or five years now. Shit. It's been a minute. The thing I really like is those bagel bites, bro. Bagel bites are fucking fire. Like, I remember I bought a, uh whatever toaster oven thingy specifically to make bagel bites and that shit was like a great investment <laughs> i remember i bought a fucking uh, toaster oven just for that reason to cook bagel bites and it was a great purchase Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of uh, tater tots either. The only time I like tater tots, I guess, is if they have, like, toppings on them, but even then. Dude, Hot Pockets are kind of gross. I remember, like, during COVID or whatever, when all the fucking, like, grocery stores were picked over because everybody was actually afraid. Like, the only thing I could buy was, like, fucking Hot Pockets and shit like that. So I bought, like, a 48-pack of fucking ham and cheese Hot Pockets and lived off of them for, like, two or three weeks because none of the fucking stores had anything near me. I will probably never eat Hot Pockets again in my life because of that. I got so sick of those things so quickly. Profit with the two. What I miss, Griff. Has Phil reacted to Red Fail? Oh, yeah, man. We're gonna watch it in a little bit. It seems like DSP's marriage is falling apart. What makes you say that? He blamed the detractors for his marriage issues? What marriage issues does he have? The fuck? Is he talking about his personal life again on stream now? He's venting? About that my fucking bitch wife won't let me play WWE in bed. <laughs> in an aqua teal video we'll check it out man 
Phil looks so done with Xbox. I agree, man. I think he's ready to get his retirement package at this point. Andrew Tate came out as gay. Thank God, man. Now I can too because Top G did it and it's okay for me. Yeah, Andrew Tate has really fucking piss poor taste in women from what I've seen, bro. Like, a lot of the chicks that I've seen him call, like, beautiful and stuff are, like, the type with the fucking lip fillers, plastic surgery, big fake titties. Like, it's gross, honestly. He likes trashy-ass women, dude. Like, he likes the bottom of the barrel types with no fucking self-confidence, which, I mean, I guess makes sense because he wants to control them, but, you know. I forgot where I heard that saying. He's like, I love fake tits because whenever I see a girl with a pair of them, I know she's insecure as fuck. It's like, bro, there's probably some truth to that. Because, like, if you have to modify your body because you're not happy with the way you look, you're probably not very, uh, filled with self-esteem. Well, the thing is, dude, he said he would rather fuck a 10 out of 10 trans woman or a versus a 1 out of 10 woman, which, I mean, to be fair, dude, like, all right, if a trans woman is actually 10 out of 10, would you even be able to tell they're trans at that point? Because how would you consider a trans woman to be a 10 out of 10? Um... Like, how would you even consider her to be a 10 out of 10 if they're trans in the first place, you know? Like, that's just not possible. Like, you can't view a trans woman as, like, a 10 out of 10 unless you couldn't tell that they're not a fucking woman, right? I don't know. Oh, shit. That's the way I look at it. Oh god, Zong Xena with the 100. Hey Griffin, just trying to spread some positivity and happiness. Also, can you play Redfall to its completion? No. I already said I'm not playing Redfall to its completion because I'm not giving them that fucking extra player. Hell nah. That would be great. For who? Hell nah, bro. I ain't playing that shit. I've already said like three nights now I'm not playing that shit, bro. Hell nah. Also, play it on normal difficulty so we can get some entertainment out of you. So is it supposed to be hard or something? I mean, I don't really think a difficulty would matter. You can request I play something else, but... I ain't playing Redfall, bro. I'm not giving them that fucking thing because every single person that downloads that game, whether they're playing it to shit on it or because they're genuinely curious, is going to be used in a Microsoft Twist campaign to make it seem like the game was a success. I ain't contributing to that. The OCD achievement? I could just make a different account. That's not a big deal. You got to sell out at some point. Nah, even I have my limits. 
I'm not supporting that type of shit. I mean, it's the same thing as like, um, whatever game it was. Fuck. Um, what other game came out that I said I wouldn't buy and I never bought it? There was another game that did something similar. I can't remember. I mean, it's like basically, I guess Disney Star Wars is a good example. Daryl is on with the two. Do it for Redfall. What, not play it? Okay. Bro, I am not playing Redfall. There is no way I'm becoming part of those Microsoft stats. Dude, I would play... <laughs> I would play Crackdown 3 over fucking Redfall. Like... Bruh. And that's saying a fucking lot, bro. Crackdown 3. Ugh. I was trying to think, what other game? Oh. What's the other... Oh, fuck. What's that other really shitty... I think it was like Super... <laughs> I'm trying to think of all these dog shit Xbox games that came out last gen. I think Super Lucky's Tale. Voodoo Vents. What are these other ones that I never played? I don't know, man. There's a lot of them. That game was fun? No, it was not. So Zong, you can pick a different game or something if you want. Ghost of Tsushima? Um, I mean, I guess I could. I could open up my PS5. How much is Ghost of Tsushima? good fucking question because I don't think I do. drive is not <laughs> what one drive is not designed to run on windows or it contains an error try installing the program the fuck one drive is not designed to run on windows apparently guys i just got that error message that's cool who would have thought one drive is not designed to fucking run on windows Gaming. Oh shit. Oh, I did remember it. All right, let's go. I got the code. Seven, two, one, five, three, seven. Verify. All right, let's go. 
Let's see if it lets me in. <laughs> um, where's my account? Game library. Does not look like I have it. And I'm sure you need to spend like the full 70 bucks to get the fucking PS5 version, right? Or else you have to play the shitty PS4 version. Of course, they're probably gonna fucking nickel and dime me on that shit. Fuck, if you buy the code from G2A, they make you sign into a different PSN account? Yeah, that's a fucking scam. That ain't legit. I'm trying to see if I can find it for cheap. I don't know, I mean, I guess I could just order it. I really don't want to drink. Like, that game's old as fuck, bro. 70 bucks for those. Let me see. Maybe Best Buy has it. That's pretty pricey, man. 70, like, how old is that game? Like, fucking five years? That's wild, man. No wonder why Sony makes so much money. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, 70, oh, damn. Those motherfuckers run a rack. They're worse than Nintendo. an eBay copy and I will play it on stream I do not know if I will finish it but I will buy a copy I don't know when it'll get here so just keep that in mind it may be a little while but I will actually play it Ghost of Tsushima director Scott let me do cheapest, buy it now. Sort by price lowest. Oh my God, if I buy three of them, I can get it for even cheaper. All right, so it'll get here Monday, it looks like. Buy it now. No thanks. Visa. Come and pay. All right, it's on the way. I bought a copy of it. It will be here most likely Monday, is what it says. But it's from eBay, so it may take the guy a while to ship it out. But I will play Ghost of Tsushima on stream. I appreciate it, Zong. But I gotta, I gotta draw the line in the sand on fucking uh, Redfall. No, I didn't buy a uh, Redfall. <laughs> I got Ghost of Tsushima. Oski Oski with the two play Mario Kart 8 3DS Rainbow. Yeah, I can real quick. Or do you mean seven? Because I think eight's uh, the Wii U, right? I can't afford this shit! 
Let's see. Dexus with the two? Just get PS plus extra for a month. It's... Bruh. Well, now somebody mentions it. Oh, well. I already fucking ordered it. It doesn't matter. I can always sell it after I'm done with it. You can't cancel eBay orders, bro. I mean, I can try, but I feel like that's kind of shitty to do. I'll see how big the account is I purchased it from. Oh, that's like the fucking unedited music. Hold on. Oh, this dude's a huge account. Okay, I don't feel bad about canceling. More action. Um, why do I not see the option to cancel? Usually people will just cancel an order. It's not really that... He has like 500 of them listed, so I'm guessing it's not going to be a big deal. Yeah, 406 sold. Like over 100 of them available, so I highly doubt he's going to give a fuck that I'm canceling an order. But yeah, I don't like to be that guy who cancels orders. So yeah, I'll unpack my PS5, and I guess tomorrow we can play that. Timothy Marco of the two, Ghost is better than Infamous Second Son, in my opinion. I don't know about that one. The only reason I say that is because isn't Ghost of Tsushima more like a stealth game versus more of like an action game? Or is it still more action focused? I love Infamous Second Son. Personally, I thought it was really good. I think there's a few parts where you have to stealth. Unfortunate. You can't play too much COD, bro. That's a common misconception. It's literally impossible to play too much Call of Duty. Well, if I'm streaming it, I don't really care about unskippable cutscenes because I can just read the chat. I never played it personally because of the unskippable cutscenes. Dude, COD is just a W. I don't know what to tell you. It's 
especially in Infinity Ward, God, like, shit's fire. plays COD all day, every day. It is my job, man. I am a full-time gamer. Well, at least I know what my PlayStation login info is so I can access my game, so that's good. Motherfuckers mad you like COD? It is sad, man. How long have I had my PS5 unopened? Ooh, like a week or two? I don't remember when I ordered it. I still think it was one of the funniest fucking things ever that, uh, you know, when these like fucking X bots and shit were like, yeah, man, I haven't really played Call of Duty in years, but once it's in Game Pass, I think I'll try it out. Bruh. It was like, <laughs> it's like some of the most sad shit I've ever heard, man. It's like, oh my God, dude, they're just like fake hyping everything. If it's in Game Pass, all of a sudden, it's like the greatest thing ever. Like, you had all these fucking 40-year-old men capping for Call of Duty, acting like it was their favorite game because Microsoft was about to buy it. Which corporation am I a slave to exactly? Other than the one that pays me to work for them, but you know, that's an entirely different story. Which corporate like which corporation am I a slave to? That's interesting. The gaming one? I don't know. I don't know either. D. Rick Venegas with the two better businessman, Dr. Disrespect or Tim the Tap. I know nothing about Tim the Tap Man, so I would just say Dr. Disrespect. Uh, Profit with the two, you gonna wait, Jap dub the game? They fixed the sink. I mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I can if you want. If you want the full Weeaboo experience, I guess I could. You want to work for Bobby? I mean, if he pays me enough, sure. I would gladly work at Activision.
Like shit, they pay well. I can get my uh, adult daycare job in the video game industry and take my mental health days. Can I get one more kill? Yes. D Rick Venegas with the two. Would you rather play the Quiet Man or Redfall? The Quiet Man. Honestly, that sounds much better. The Quiet Man is just a very misunderstood game, bro. It's actually very good. Just like Valan Wonderland. Alright, so I guess tonight or tomorrow I'll open up my PS5 and then uh, put the black face plates on it and bring it back in here. And then I'll get the PS Plus Extra, whatever the fuck, and then we will uh, play Ghost of Sushi tomorrow. Play Demon Souls instead. I can't afford this shit. Too expensive, man. I can't afford that. Yeah, dude, I told y'all I'm broke as fuck. I'm poor. I can barely afford to eat. I can't sell my Pokemon cards, bro. They're like a part of me. It's like asking me to sell a finger. Well, with the two, you're gonna name your PS5 Justin? The fuck? <laughs> Do people name their consoles? What the fuck? Yeah, I broke my controller. Weaponized autism of the two, I sound autistic with the lisp in my voiceover. Well, maybe you are, bro. Ever think about that? Ever think about that? I will beg like DS. Give me monies! Open your wallets and give me all of your monies! I need the monies. Griffin looking like Squidward in his box. That's right. Spare change. 
Spare change. Please, every penny helps. Bro, I'm not playing Redfall. Like, I just refuse to fucking play that shit. I am not giving them the download. Just like I would not buy fucking Forspoken. The only reason I played that is because Square Enix gave it to me for free. Mesnia with the two, I hope they don't mess up Wesker. Resident Evil 5 Remake. I don't know, I'm actually very interested in Resident Evil 5 Remake. That'd probably be the only one I'd actually play. Oski Woski with the two, e-begging. It's like waving a tin cup to the world. That's right, man. Based uh, Breaking Bad moment. I wish I could find that clip, because I would love to put that on the soundboard. When Walt's shitting on his fucking uh, cripple son for making the e-begging site. Bro, the Pixel Remaster is the type of game you want to get on the Switch, not on the PS5. Why the fuck would you want to, like, sit there and have your entire TV dedicated to, like, a turn-based RPG? You should get it on the Switch, and that way you could turn your TV on Netflix and watch something while you play at the same time. 500 IQ. Taco pizza? That sounds gross, man. Why would you try that? Sounds like a mistake was made. back shit man I guess my dog's not eating this week unlucky oh well at least worst case is guys I can add it to my physical game collection Yeah, $40 would change my life in all honesty. Like, I don't know. $40, I could literally retire my parents, buy my dream home, get a brand new Lambo, and never have to work another day in my life. $40 is some real life-changing money, guys. Your sister got a fake Chanel bag? Fake bag for a fake person. That's right, man. $2,000 bag with no cash in your purse. Very fucking true. I got $60 in my 
fucking purse. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Phil not getting that bonus. Yeah, I highly doubt he's going to get a performance bonus. Especially after that deal didn't close, too. Especially after that deal didn't close. Yeah, he's got to be kind of worried about his job security, which is why I think he did the interview that he did. Yeah, we're going to watch the uh, Phil Spencer interview. It would be hard to replace Phil, honestly. Well, it'd be hard to replace him because, you know, he's entrenched in Microsoft. Anyway, it's going to be hard to get rid of him if they want to or not. Not to mention, he's like the face of Xbox, so... You know, this, the will of Phil is still going very strong. Like, I get recommended these fucking tweets and shit about Xbox, because I'm pretty sure Twitter listens in on your, your, like, your conversations. But, um, anyway, I saw, like, this recommended tweet. It's like, it's not Phil's fault for Redfall. It's all the people working under him who misled him about the status of the game. And it's like, bruh, they should be fired. Phil needs better people working under him. And I'm like, oh my god, these motherfuckers don't get off his dick for three seconds. They really don't fucking get off his dick for three fucking seconds, bro. They just consistently slob all over that shit, bro. It is so sad. Dex is with the 249. Xbox doesn't need good games, according to Phil. Exactly, man. Good games don't do anything. Who buys a console to play good games? I don't. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of true. I have, I have, like, fucking consoles that just sit there to collect dust, so... Fuck. Maybe he's right. I bought my two Xboxes as dust collectors. Maybe he's on to something, guys. Shit. Redfall killed Kid Smooth's power supply. Hopefully he won't be fanboying for Xbox anymore, man. He can move on with his life. Yeah, Colt literally during his review of Redfall was like listing all these massive problems with the game, but eventually he comes back and like the conditioning kicks back in and he goes, but I'm having so much fun. 
Yes, he likes Redfall, just like he likes Crackdown 3. I think he said it deserves like an 80. But I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Gee willikers, guys. This game sure is fun. Bro, it's just like sad. These guys are like low-key brainwashed over fucking console gaming. Yeah, bro, he's got the fucking, uh... He's got the Bill Gates Moderna microchip in his fucking bloodstream. And, uh, you know, they're using it to control him to like Microsoft products. Is my guess. Uh, I will probably not be playing the new Zelda game. I did not really like the first one, so... Unless the second one is somehow dramatically better in the sense that weapons don't break, the activities in the open world are not the same fucking boring puzzles over and over again. Probably not. He only writes on the Surface Tap. Bro, I have a Surface Book 3, so I'm a real Microsoft Power user, guys. I have their laptop. That thing is so fucking buggy, dude. I have never had a laptop be that fucking buggy. The Surface line of devices is very fucking buggy. My razor blade was like fucking perfect, other than the fact that I fried the battery using it as a desktop for like two years but um the surface book three like i have all sorts of issues like i couldn't like manually change the time and the settings it always thinks the keyboard's detached when it's not it like i don't fucking know man it's weird i wait hold on oscu oscu okay i thought you were you generation for the second shit uh, Asku Asku the 50. I want to have a little fun in this video link. Go to it and go to the comments and type out Molly music video when and don't worry. This is my cousin. I just love to bother him about that song. Also, when will you play Mario? Oh, I found my switch games. Actually, I was cleaning under my desk and I found the fucking case. So we're good. But yeah, hold on. I see your link. Give me a second. So let me copy this. Molly music video. Should I put we're waiting at the end? But yeah, I can uh, do Mario Kart 8 one night. I found my Switch games finally. You know, my fucking $1,800 fucking Nintendo Switch case that went missing. So that's good. Dude, that's actually fucking wild to think about. Like, all those little fucking Switch cartridges are worth like 60 bucks a piece because they never go on fucking sale. All right, so the comment is posted, man. It should be up there if you want to check. But yeah, I could do Mario Kart one night. That'd be kind of fun, honestly. Are you talking about the Switch case box where you can store? No, so it's like, I think it's like a Satisfy. Uh, it's a Satisfy gaming case. Here, I'll post the link. Everyone go comment. Help our boy Oskiwaski out. Blow his cousin's comment section. <laughs> I don't fucking know. 
But yeah, there's the link. I've seen it on Phoenix Resale Channel. Uh, no, it's like a Satisfy gaming case, and it's got like, I think, 50 or 60 slots in it. They're like little, I guess, like books of a page you open up that fold over the top of the Switch. But yeah, I got like 30 something games in there. I should play Jedi Survivor, isn't it busted? I don't really want to play it if it's busted, man. He'll know it's me, though, because I always bother him about it. Bruh. What else is family for, right? <laughs> what else is family for? Yeah, I need to finish Fallen Order before I play Jedi Survivor anyway. Um, here, let me see if I can find it. Cause I'll never get that case again. It looks like. Damn, that's unfortunate. I have never once said I would ever play Redfall. Thank you very much. Dark Souls 2 or Demons? I would say Dark Souls 2 is the better game. But, you know, I'm sure many people... Eh, I don't know if many people would disagree with that. Demon Souls is really bare bones. Like, you can tell Demon Souls is like a proof of concept for what would be Dark Souls. And plus, all the bosses in Demon Souls are really fucking easy. Like, you just have to learn how to... Like, they all have very fucking, like, easy to exploit like weaknesses I guess is what I'm trying to say versus like a souls boss it's more of just like you know waiting it out you know taking your time with it like in every single demon souls boss you can cheese the fuck out of them like they're pretty easy yeah but dark souls 2 has some really fucking sick armor and weapons man not to mention just the number of fucking cool bosses in that game. Yeah, Demon Souls literally was like the proof of concept. Which the game actually sold very poorly, so it's cool that Dark Souls still got to come out. But yeah, basically they used uh, Demon Souls to kind of test out the concept, made a bunch of adjustments, and arrived at Dark Souls 1, and the rest is history. I doubt Bloodborne 2 will ever be a thing. I don't really think Bloodborne was set up to be a franchise anyway. It wouldn't really make sense. 
Because don't you kill, like, the fucking god creature thingy at the end? It'd be kind of hard to do. Yeah, you killed like the old one or whatever the fuck and then you become one of them and you're like a fucking worm or some shit. But at least you get to get held by a woman. True, laugh my ass off the dodge, hit and die a hundred times is stupid. Bro, don't unironically agree with I'm Key. I'm Key is a contrarian. He actually loves the Souls games. In fact, he told me so. I'm Key is like that. What's that anime term for like the girl that plays hard to get but secretly likes the guy or whatever the fuck? That's what I'm Key is, bro. He just can't admit his true feelings, so he's got to like pretend to be someone he's not, basically. Yeah, the Sun Deers or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah, the Sun Deers. That's what I'm key is. He's a fucking sun deer. I heard Dark Souls 1 on the Switch is actually a really good port. It's one of the better ports. I think it ran better than the PC port at first for the uh, remastered edition. I think the Switch version is actually pretty solid. Yeah, graphics are never going to be great on the Switch. That's like saying mobile game controls aren't as good as like a fucking keyboard and mouse. That's just kind of a given. One more match, then we'll check out this uh, Phil Spender video. Guts, you can't recommend fixes to people that uh, mindlessly hate Nintendo. They're just upset because they never had a childhood. Mommy never loved them enough to buy them a DS or a Wii or a Wii U or any of that so they have a hate boner for Nintendo
I watched David Jaff react to the Phil interview. He tore into them all. Yo, I'll have to check that out tomorrow when I'm working. That sounds really interesting. So he was like shitting on Phil Spencer. Because, I mean, if you, anybody can tell you about fucking game development, it's definitely David Jaffe, so... Yeah, I like David Jav. He's pretty in he's pretty entertaining. I just like the fact he doesn't give a fuck and has genuine opinions, so I can respect that. We good? I don't know what the fuck happened. Are we good? What the fuck? All right, my router, or I guess not really router, my extender just turned off. So I don't know what the fuck happened there. I don't know what the fuck happened. Hold on. Like, Call of Duty died. I no longer have Ethernet. Hold on. I think Call of Duty fucked. <laughs> Although, that wouldn't make sense. How would that happen? I didn't pay my bill. Yeah, something like that. I'm just going to wait for this extender to boot back up because it's probably going to take a while. Or, uh, actually, I think it should be okay. Oh, it's identifying. Give it a second. My, uh, Ethernet's about to connect. Identifying. Because my internet's going to be dumb. Although, let me check. It may be all right. Um, speed test. Let's see what I'm getting right now. Getting 80 megabytes download, which is pretty good for not having a fucking uh, antenna on my uh, PC. Oh, I'm getting 40 upload. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, we're good. I think we should be okay. If the uh, stream like skips again, If the stream like skips again, it's probably just because my ethernet connected, but oh, never mind. It's showing a yellow, so I don't think it's going to connect. All right. Let me uh, just put it on here real quick.
think we're good. Let me just do something real quick. I just want to see if I can get my... I have a little uh, adapter plugged in that I'm wondering... Bro, I don't know why my extender's not working now. That's so fucking gay. Oh, shit, it's back. All right, cool. I got Wi-Fi. Or uh, Ethernet again. So we're Gucci. All right, let's go. Nice. I got it to work. I just pushed the button on the front of the router, and it started blinking. <laughs> All right, let's go, man. All right, we're back connected to Ethernet. Nicholas Cage, the 60 minute. Oh, dude, I wish I could watch that, but that'll get struck for TV. So, Phil Spencer interview. All right, boys. Let's -a go. Here we go. All right, I want to. I need my notepad because I want to take notes in case I end up wanting to make a video on this. So, I need to be able to take notes for timestamps because I don't want to have to dig through this shit again. <laughs> I'm going to knock out two birds with one stone here. Yeah, I got to study for my test, guys. I got to take notes on Phil Spencer. That was such a gay intro. What the heck is going on, everybody? Uh, Welcome back to another on, episode guys? of the Kind of Funny X Cast. Your home for all things heck Xbox yeah. here at Kind of Funny. Of course, I'm one of your hosts, Snowbike Mike, and today. Hopefully, he doesn't talk very much. I am joined by both of my gaming dads and one very special guest. You see him in the middle if you're watching or if you're listening. It's the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, joining the X Cast today. Phil, we'll start with you. What up, homie? How are you? Bro, his shirt says... Gaming. Yeah! <laughs> um, truth be told, it's, uh, I've had easier couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be a good discussion today. I'm always happy to come on, talk to XCast. You guys do an amazing job talking to the community, keeping it real. So it's, uh, it's an honor to be on with you guys. Thanks, Phil. Of course, you have been on a number of kind of funny content, but this is the first time you have joined us with the X cast here with the green team. So we appreciate your time and being here with me and my two gaming dads. Of course, I'll go around the room. This guy is so fucking cringe. Paris Lily, how are you today? No wonder why fucking Phil wanted to go on this show, man. These motherfuckers are softer than fucking cotton. Oh, I'm doing fantastic and... As you already said, thank you, Phil, for uh, coming on this episode. Greg Miller, instead of going on your show, finally he is on the actual Xbox show for Kind of Funny. So I'm very excited and appreciative of that. Looking forward to the conversation. Big deal. Gary Witta, you have a green juvie today. You're feeling the green. Yeah, this kiwi strawberry's not my favorite flavor, I don't think, but it was the only one you had in the fridge. You know, the price was right, so I grabbed one. <laughs> you love a free energy drink. You know me, I'll, I don't care what it is, if it's free. Did he oil his face up before right, coming so on? One. <laughs> you love a free energy drink? You know me, I'll, I don't care what it is, if it's free. I'm happy you're back, Gary. We have a really fun conversation and discussion to be had with you and the team. I see you got your book. Why don't you plug that book really quick? Oh, time. no, I, I didn't bring this into plug it. I just had a spare copy. I was going to give it to someone. But no, Gundog, uh, we actually had a, a small change in the publishing date. It comes out August 1st. You can pre-order it right now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere quality books are sold. I love that. Yeah. You're just bringing the book around now. Yeah, I like man. that. You just, around. Around. you just carry the book around. Yeah. All right. Good for you. I like that. Well, of course, this is the Kind of Funny X cast. We post each and every Thursday at 6 a.m. West Coast, best coast time on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, podcast services around the globe, and, of course, on Rooster Teeth. Dot com. Don't forget, we are now Epic Games partners, which means you can support the team in a brand new way. <laughs> Let's if you go, Fortnite! Games off the Epic Games Store. If you're upgrading your look in Fortnite, Rocket League, or Fall Guys, don't forget to use our Epic Creator Code, kind of funny, at checkout. And of course, we love to shout out those who support us over on Patreon to help keep the lights on here in the spare bedroom. If you're over on Patreon, thank you for, of course, 
watching live with multiple multiple of our shows. We're not doing this episode live, but thank you for your support. And thank you to our Patreon producers for the month of May, Delaney Twining. Thank you for your support. This week, the Kind of Funny X-Cast is sponsored by Honey and Rocket Money. But myself and the team will tell you all about that in just Damn, a little bruh. bit. Let's get to the show. We get to hang out. For real. Let's Phil get to this Spencer. shit. It's only it's 40 fucking a- minutes, and we just wasted four minutes of this dude fucking talking. Oski Woski with the two. He looks so worried. I think his job is. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too, man. That's what the only reason you do PR tours as a fucking executive is try to win public sentiment. Fun time together. Bill, let's just jump right into it. And it's a tough way to start this episode. It's my oh, birthday. And that- Dexus with the two. Have you heard that Leafy's back on Rumble? Yeah, I heard he's streaming over there, right? This week, and I didn't want to have to do it like this, but Phil, it's been a tough week in the Xbox universe. As you know, of course, the CMA kind of... Bro, it's been a tough fucking two months. <laughs> it's not just been a week. Blocking our acquisition of Activision Blizzard King and Redfall coming out. Two poor reviews at the launch. Let's start off at the top. Phil... Let's talk about the CMA and, of course, this Activision Blizzard acquisition. How are you feeling about this? What should be the overall mindset for Xbox gamers when we look at this after months and months of conversation? Yeah, we you know we remain confident. Um, obviously, the news from the CMA, which for those not tracking all this, is the United Kingdom's uh, regulatory board on acquisitions Boy. to block the acquisition. We will be appealing that. Uh, that's our plan. We continue to work with the European Union. We'll continue to work with the FTC. I think there are like 14 jurisdictions all up. We're working on approval. I think we have nine approvals so far. Um, but the CMA decision was disappointing. Uh, I've been talking to that group for coming up on a year. Uh, I They've defined a market of of cloud gaming that, in my mind, doesn't really exist yet today. Uh, but they have a point of view that maybe... Isn't Xbox always harping on the fact that they're going to hit 2 billion gamers by, you know, pumping the cloud? So I think that's kind of ironic that Microsoft, you know, markets the shit out of fucking cloud gaming, acting like it's some huge fucking deal to be able to play Xbox games on your phone using xCloud. And now it doesn't even fucking exist. Well, which one is it, bro? Like, I don't know, man. Do we have a lead? I understand that none of this shit is actually going to be very truthful because he works for the fucking company. But, yeah. In a market that is just forming and that this content could somehow prohibit others from competing in that market. But we'll appeal. Uh, we stay on it. The company remains very, very committed. Uh, we think Activision, Activision Blizzard King is not our strategy, <clears> but <throat> it is an accelerant for our strategy. So we're, uh, we're still heads down and working through regulatory. I am pleased to hear that, of course, as a big fan of many of those gaming franchises over there. I'm looking forward to seeing this deal go through, and I'm glad to hear that you and the This guy is so fucking squirrely, bro. Team are still hard at work at making this happen. It's been a long road. It's been a tough road to talk about each and every single week, kind of falling apart. But uh, I'm it's always the Brits, isn't it, Mike? It's we're always the fly in the ointment. (laughs) Got it. We got it. We just got to rain on everyone's parade. It's a tough one, Gary. Of course, we got to move on. To the next one, Phil, of course, Redfall has released from Arcane Austin, and uh, it's been a tough release week for that, coming out to low reviews and a lot of disappointment from many fans. Can you talk about that? What is your thoughts right now as we head into the first week of this game being out? Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll start, not, I'll, I'll hit, I'll hit Redfall, but I'll just say all up, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that's more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. It's more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. Uh, you could have fooled me, bro. You could have fooled fucking me. Like, bro, that's like all that happens nowadays. Yet y'all decided to release Redfall if you don't want to disappoint. Like, make that shit make sense, motherfucker. Like, no. That makes zero fucking sense. How are you going to push out a game like Redfall and say the thing you dislike most is disappointing the fucking gaming or Xbox community? Oh, my God. Um, I've been a part of it. 
for a long time. I obviously work on Xbox, head of the business, have a lot of friends, get a lot of feedback. Um, and just to kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm a <laughs> You're just, oh my God, bro. You are the one who chose to push it out. You are the head of Xbox. If you're disappointed in the game, don't release it. Bruh. I'm upset with myself. Uh, I, I kind of make it revisit our process. You know, I think back to the announcement of 60 frames per second, and then we weren't shipping 60 frames per second. That was kind of our punch in the chin, rightfully, uh, a couple weeks ago. And then seeing the game come out and the critical response was not what we wanted. Uh, <laughs> really? Um, I mean, why did you release a game like that if you didn't want negative critical response? Like the fuck? And it's 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 disappointing. Um, and so, kind of pick myself up. Uh, what can we learn? How can we get better? Uh, this is ev he literally says the same thing every single time something happens, dude. We need to learn from this. We need to get better moving forward. You know, this is a valuable lesson. It's the same talking points every single fucking time the Phil like addresses one of these controversies. Like it's the same script, just worded differently. Uh, I, one thing I'll fight is kind of uh, what went wrong. There's clearly quality and execution things that we can do. But one thing I won't do is push against creative aspirations of our teams. Why? Crack that whip, motherfucker. Dude, how are you going to say you're not going to push against the creative aspirations of your team when Redfall is the creative aspiration of your team? There is nothing creative about the fucking game. It's the most generic garbage that Arcane has ever released to date. Like, say what you will about Deathloop. Like, that game had way more fucking effort and uniqueness into it than fucking Redfall does. Redfall is literally a generic open-world looter shooter. Like, it's awful. Then a lot of people will say, hey, you've got teams. Teams know how to do one kind of game. Just force them to go do the one kind of game that they have a proven track record for. That's right, bro. A.K.A. do their fucking job. <laughs> Um, and I'm just not a believer in that. Maybe that means I'll, I'll under-deliver for some of our fans out there. But when a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango wants to go do Hi-Fi, when everybody probably thought they were doing Evil the Within 3, um, I want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability, push their aspirations. Um, but I also need to have a, a great selection of games that are continue to come that surprise and delight our fans. And we under delivered on that. And for that, I apologize. It's um, not not what I expect, not what I want. Um. <laughs> Bro, then I just like this is all good and well, but it's like, dude, you're literally the guy, the only guy. At Microsoft that can basically say, nah, we ain't releasing this shit. Go back and fix it. Like, this is the fucking dude who has the power to basically do whatever the fuck he wants within Microsoft's gaming division. <laughs> it's like, well, dude, why do you hate, you know, supposedly disappointing Xbox fans, but at every opportunity, you don't seem to miss the opportunity to do exactly just fucking that. But, you know, it's ours to deliver. So following up on that, Phil, so again, I appreciate the transparency on that, but there, there is a second component to this. And as you may or may not know, I, I talk to a lot of people in the Xbox community because I want to understand, you know, what people are excited about, what they're frustrated about, things like that. So kind of sticking on this conversation about Redfall, but it's kind of a bigger general question as well. And I kind of want to read directly from this so I make sure I, I get it crystal clear. So what goes into the decision to delay a game when when you launch it feature incomplete or there's a bunch of technical issues obviously the re we've seen recent examples around the industry redfall and hail infinite are two that stick out in my mind for xbox you know we obviously have seen the review scores 
clearly, you know, we've, we've had the opinion that the game should be delayed. We know every developer wants to ship the best game that they possibly can, but from your level, you know, what's the balance there on when to ship a game that may be feature incomplete or have some technical issues or just simply give it more time and delay it? Well, I think those are, and I'm happy to go very deep on this. I think if I think about a team's execution on a game, there's, we had a creative vision and did we realize that vision through the game that we created? No. That's not a delay question if the answer is no. Like, what is he, what is this fucking non answer? He's like, I have no idea, man. Like you can't take something that that you started on. This isn't a Redfall specific conversation, right. but we will build games that review in the high 80s and we will review, we will build games that review in the 60s. I mean, it's just kind of. Why would you make a game that reviews in the 60s, bro? Why would you go through the trouble of developing a game just to have it come out dog shit? Like, here he is basically admitting, like, this is the new fucking norm, guys. 80s to 60s is what you can expect from Xbox Game Studios, where back on the 360, Xbox exclusives were hitting the fucking mid-90s. Part of being in game publishing, and if if you're afraid of that, then you shouldn't be in the entertainment business. You shouldn't be in the games business. That said, every time we deliver... You should be afraid of it, dude. You should do everything in your power to prevent a game like Redfall from releasing ever again. You should be fucking, like, terrified of the concept of you releasing a fucking video game and it gets a 57 on Metacritic because it's broken buggy and one of the most, like, content-sparse looter shooters to ever fucking exist. And it's your first brand new AAA $70 new IP on Xbox in how many fucking years? Like, bruh. <laughs> what the fuck is this? For something below our own internal expectations that surprises us, um, we should check our process. I don't look at the review scores on Redfall, and I don't. I, there, there are quality issues, and we're working on those. Um, but I think there's a, a fundamental piece of feedback that we get that the game isn't realizing the creative vision that it had for its players. That doesn't feel like a hey, just delay it. That feels like the game had a goal to do one thing, and when players are actually playing, they're not feeling that thing. They're not feeling the the creative execution of the team. Um, when a game needs to be delayed, what we did with Halo, we did with Starfield, we did with Redfall, because the production timeline is saying we have this vision and our production timelines don't get us to the completion of that vision, uh, we're, we do delay games. We do that. Um, learning about the quality, there are clearly, I've seen them, I know there are bugs in Redfall that's launching. But when I look at like the crash rates on the game, because we get all the telemetry of everything that's happened, it's it's not out of proportion for a game that has, has just launched. It's it's kind of in the pocket of what we would expect. Bruh. Bruh. Oh my god. Yo, all right. 1107 crash rate. <laughs> what? Yo, this guy's like, "What the fuck?" Bro, what the fuck did he just say? So, I guess Star or no fucking Redfall's uh, quality control issues are just par for the course for Microsoft. You know, that's acceptable to them. It's not really even worth noting. That's not to de deny any of the animation streaming of texture bugs, the AI bugs that we've seen. We will go work on those. But when I look at the review scores of this should have worked on those before the game came out, bro. Game. It's did we did we have enough of creative differentiation in our core idea? Um, and did we realize that creative ambition? I'm a huge supporter of Arcane Austin. Their track record is 
awesome. I love a lot of the. Is it? Is it actually awesome? What is Arcane Austin released other than Prey? Which honestly, I didn't really even like Prey. What else is their track record, man? Let's see. Arcane Austin games. Uh, I can't afford this shit. I don't know what uh Pray oh so just pray and redfall Oh they made that Wolfenstein game too that's right yeah, so they don't have a track record at all. The great games that they built, this is one where the team didn't hit their own internal... They made that shitty Wolfenstein Youngblood, which was absolute garbage. Weaponized autism with the two Xbox fans should be absolutely pissed off. Dude, 100%, and we're going to get to the worst fucking parts pretty soon, I'm guessing. Where he says basically good games don't sell consoles. ...goals when it launched. I think it's maybe a little simplistic to just say hey if you would have just delayed it three months the core creative of the game would have delivered on something that was different than what it was um so i look at them at different camps if they're dude there's a difference between a buggy broken game versus a game that's just not good redfall is both of those things the game isn't good but it also runs like shit and has so many fucking issues that don't even help like, you can enjoy a mid-game, I feel like. But if it's a mid-game with fundamental issues, with the actual fucking performance and actual gameplay experience, there's no fucking enjoyment to be had. It's just trash at that point. There's a production timeline issue. We've been open to delaying. If we just have more bugs than we should have at the end of a game, we're, we, we're open to delaying. Um, at some point, we have to have a creative vision and put the game out and creator, uh, reviewers and players will tell us what they think. Can I jump in? <laughs> yeah, of course. Please get That was such a non-answer, bro. So I have a, just a couple of small observations and then, then, then a question. First of all, I want to give Phil props for coming on here give today and, and talk just for a minute about, about why, why I admire Phil, because he and I have been here before. Back <laughs> in 2020, during the pandemic, when I was doing animal talking, Phil, you'll remember this, Phil yeah. was booked to come on my dumb Animal Crossing talk show. <laughs> and then after he was booked, the news came that Halo was going to be, Halo Infinite was going to be delayed and would not ship with the Xbox Series X and S. And it was a, you'll, you'll remember, it was a big deal. There was a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth and people rending their garments. And I was fully prepared for the other shoe to drop. I was waiting for a call from Xbox PR from Jeff. You know, your friend of mine, Jeff, over in Xbox PR. To... I guess he's fucking wiping his asshole before he kiss, like fucking goes in for the kiss, bro. Like, what the fuck is this shit? Say, Phil's not going to be able to come on the show live because, you know, it's a big mess right now. We don't want to put him in the firing line for that. And Jeff called and I thought, here, here it is. Here comes the other shoe. And he was like, Phil just wants to know, like, when's the tech rehearsal? Like, it's on his... Oh, it's going ahead? And he came on on a live talk show and took a bunch of tough questions on a really tough subject and took it on the chin. And I will always, I've always admired him for that, for not, we would have been very easy for him to pull out and he didn't. He came on and, he, and he's doing it again now. And I, and I salute Phil for that. The other point I want to make is that every time, there may be some Sony warrior, platform warriors out there right now crowing about the fact that Redfall has, has underperformed. I just want to point this out as a creative. Every time somebody takes a big bet, especially a big AAA bet, on an original idea, a new IP, and it fails, everybody suffers. It's bad yep. for... What? Everybody. Because it makes it that much harder for the, for the, for the Phils and the Jim Ryans of the world, the, create, the, the, the big, you know, the creative, the decision makers, to, to take a chance on them. Oh, but the last time... Redfall was already in fucking development before Phil ever took a fucking chance on it in the first place we did that it didn't work like, like maybe let's just make a sequel to the next thing or let the algorithm tell us what to do so every time somebody takes a risk on something new and especially if it involves something different in game design let's try something that has been done for it doesn't work it hurts everybody so i just want everyone to be clear this sucks for everybody and it's, i see it in my business I see it in hollywood i see it in film and television it's why so much content is so 
generic and derivative and formulaic because everyone's afraid to take a risk. And when something new succeeds, it's good for everyone. When something fa new and, and original fails, it's bad for everyone. So I just want to acknowledge that this is like a big shit sandwich and we all have to take a bite, including the Sony people. No, I fucking do not, bro. Keep your fucking shit sandwich to yourself because I ain't playing that shit, bro. Including everybody. Hell nah. Specifically with the... Sorry, this is a long time. I would have rather Arcane not taken a fucking risk and made another uh, Dishonored game. Specifically with the questions I've I want to talk specifically about Redfall. When you say that you're disappointed in the reaction, that to me suggests that the reaction was something different than what you were expecting, what you were hoping for. But I know that when you, these big AAA games, they get subjected to all kinds of internal testing, focus group. Delta Gold with the two, everything is generic. Yeah, Redfall is an exa Exactly, like there's nothing special about that game whatsoever. They literally replaced zombies with vampires and acted like it was some fucking brand new idea. There's nothing special about that game whatsoever groups come in there are third party companies that will come in and even write like mock reviews or it comes like hit detection out of the wallet tell you here's what you can expect the press to make of your game so usually you've got a sense of what the game is going to how it's going to be received before it's released so you can be prepared for it so phil when you say you're disappointed does that mean that you thought the game was going to be better received or did, did it was it in line with xxt were you how surprised were you by the reaction or how like internally how much do you know i don't i feel like this one people like i mean we know the game it, it, is, it has problems. Like, to what extent was was this different from what you expected? And also, and, and sorry, I know I've been talking a long time. And uh, as a, the second part of that is, when a game is released now, it's not like the old days when a, when a, when a cartridge was shipped in a box and the release the release of the game was the end of the the game's. Dude, shut the fuck up! Holy shit, man! Nobody fucking cares about your dumbass little cartridge. Like development cycle. Now it's just a. Like, bro, you have the head of Xbox on your podcast and you won't shut the fuck up for three fucking seconds? Jesus Christ, man. The, the 1.0 release is just <laughs> a point on the roadmap. To what extent, oh, given the, what we're talking about here, is not just 30 frames, but design issues, things that may be more conceptual. To what extent do you think, or, or are you committed to continuing to work on the game and getting it and getting it maybe a year down the road in you know, a cyberpunk no man's sky we've seen these redemptive stories in the past to what extent do you hold out hope that you can still get the game closer to where you wanted it to be at launch i know that was a lot <laughs> no it's, well I, at first i thought your words about creative ambition of teams you especially i mean you you you've lived this you've done this um are very well said and 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 very spot on so thank you for that and that's why i love your voice in this community because you you've created um you've seen you've seen kind of ups and as anybody in the industry we've all seen downs and um on the score yeah we do mock reviews for every game that we we launch and you need to fire those fucking mock reviewers and hire people who actually know what the fuck they're talking about because bruh and this is like double digits lower than we thought we would be. Uh, yeah, instead of a 59, we thought it was going to be a 69, bro. Hell yeah. Gaming. <laughs> That's still not fucking great. Um, with this game, went through our mock reviews. Uh, and that's what's m one of the disappointing things. Like, we we would never strive to launch a game that we thought was going to review in the low 60s. It's it's not part of our goals. If, if you look at our review scores over the last year, it's not a defense at all. Um, if you look at the review scores over the last year, um, I think the teams have done a much a better job in upping the level of quality of the games that we've... Yeah, bro. What games did you release? Pentiment over the past year? I mean, it's kind of hard to fuck up a book. What else? I mean, sure, Hi-Fi Rush reviewed well, but it's like a fucking indie tier game, okay? Is that what people have been waiting for on Xbox? More like small budget little games, or are they looking forward to big budget AAA games? So what exactly is he hyping up, man? Two games? Congratulations, I guess. We've shipped. Some of those games first shipped on PlayStation, but still, when I go through the list of the games, you still have And to guess what? Those games that shipped on PlayStation first run worse on Xbox even a year after they came out on PlayStation, so... Griffin Game... Oh, shit. Pure weaponized autism with a two. You can un... Wait, you can ironically like Crackdown and Forspoken. I mean, at least... Well, Forspoken kind of functions, but... 
not very well. Crackdown, to its credit, worked. <laughs> so there you go. They may have lied about it completely in terms of what the game was actually going to be like, but at least it worked, right? Build a game. You still have to ship a game. Um, and this game was significantly below our internal metrics in terms of where it actually reviewed. But that's not... You need to fire those people making those internal metrics because they were way the fuck off, man. Not on anybody but us. Like, we have to own that. In terms of our commitment to the game, absolutely. The team at Arcane is on taking the near-term feedback. We're, we're still working on the 60 frames per second. Uh, we have a good timeline for that. We, we're, we're committed. What is the timeline? Somebody should have pushed him on that. Committed to getting that done. And we're going to continue to to work the game. I think we've we've shown a commitment to games like Sea of Thieves and and like Grounded to continue to go and build games. But I also know that these games are seventy dollars, and I'm not gonna like I, I'm I'm gonna. Yeah, this was your first seventy dollar game. I take full responsibility for launching a game that needs to be great. You know, I think what I have with the Xbox community, what we have, what I am a part of. Um, is a team there's still questions that pop every so often of how committed is the company to this category when are we just going to push xbox out of the market um, there's a lot of twitter firing of phil right now which is fine I'm, I'm way overpaid for the role i have anyway so like i get that's my responsibility um, but we will remain committed to the game and the players um, as long as the players want to go play games um, and uh, that's my commitment to the community. Um, I'm kind of at a low point right now in terms of my delivery on that commitment to the community. Um, but it, it very much stays. I want to support the team. And I want to support the creative ambitions of the teams and I want to support the players. And, uh, we let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game. Um, I'm not a sellout with the two been in a coma 14 years. Any good games out? Yeah. Redfall, bro. Best game to ever release but we will, we will continue to strive on. You have to, right? That's just, that's what creative is about. No, you, you absolutely do. And, and to kind of start transitioning this into hopefully more happy news, but I, I do want to address uh, something, you know, around that. Obviously today you announced the uh, Xbox Game Showcase, which will be happening this June. And obviously there's going to be a lot of new reveals and surprises that come out of that, which is great. But I am going to bring it back again to another common theme that I do hear through the community. And I've actually said, to, said this to you in the past, but it's about communication coming from Xbox. I do feel back in 2021, you did a fantastic job with communication, which arguably has been the best year during this current generation of Xbox. Obviously, we know that 2022 was a light year for Xbox yeah. as far as yeah. releasing titles. Now, last year, That's putting it during the showcase, lightly. you had the 12-month plan. You didn't necessarily deliver on all the games coming. No, we didn't no deliver. Not no necessarily. Like, we didn't deliver. Yeah, absolutely. So what my, a my, shock, man! <laughs> That's like predicting the sun will rise. Point of bringing that up is this: you know, talking about some of the lessons learned that come out of that, and and obviously even with not every game making the twelve months. Going back to again, you know, game development things happen. Things aren't always going to come on time. But as we go into this showcase. One of the common themes that I hear is I don't know enough about things that you've announced in the past, like even yep. more specifically going back to 2020. And I'll just run down a quick list of it. Vowed, Perfect Dark, Everwild, which is something we really don't know that much about. Fable, State of Decay 3, Contraband. Obviously, we've seen a little more in Hellblade 2. You know, we have studios like In Exile and Compulsion Games that we know are working on things, but we haven't seen any real updates on that. So... I titled all my questions balance and communication because even in this, it's like, what is that balance on when when you show something that you know is going to be years down the road and kind of that cadence of providing updates along the way. And obviously, as we go into the showcase, not that you need to reveal anything specific here, but what were some of those lessons learned from last year's showcase that you'll bring into this one? Yeah, and you might try to get me on positive. I'm not in positive mode this week, so I'll apologize for staying in kind of cranky uh -oh. mode. But um, in terms of lessons learned, get this man I'll, I'll even go back to the Redfall videos on IGN of showing videos of the game running at 60 on PC um, at the point knowing that the game was going to run 30 frames per second at launch on console. Like, we have to be transparent about what we're showing that what we're showing is representative of what our console customer, our most committed customer to our brand, financially committed, what they're going to see, what they're going to play, and that transparency just has to get... Yeah, none of their fucking games show that, dude. 
Like, why is he saying that transparency needs to be there? It's like, dude, literally every single time Xbox shows off a fucking, like, first-party game, it's on PC. They never show footage on Xbox. Never. What do you mean it needs to get better? Why don't you just make it fucking better? Stop using PC footage. Better. Um, and I'm not pointing at anybody but myself, right? When And, and you know, I, I guess that at some point I will have enough knocks against me that it, it's somebody else here. Um, but, you know, that I think it's transparency. You hear that? Said at some point I will have enough knocks against me that it, it's somebody else here. Um, but, you know, that I think it's transparency. <laughs> you all heard that, right? Uh oh. I guess that at some point I will have enough knocks against me that it, it's somebody else here. Um, but, you know, that I think it's transparency in what we're building, what our aspiration is for the game, what it's going to look like, what the features are. And it drives me crazy when we self inflicted wounds of kind of putting things out there of communication that's confusing or misleading about what the actual end product is going to be. So you can try to take me to positive space. I'm just not in that headspace right now. That said, when I go and I look at showcase and I'm not going to try to oversell showcase here because I, if, if I were on the other side of, of watching this, it's like, Hey, after Redfall, I'm going to put my hands on the controller and that's, what's going to take to kind of prove to me, but that's not what showcase is. So, um, I'm very so no gameplay rope enthusiastic about showcase I'm I I mean that's every year though <laughs> and then it's like 50 minutes of indies I we're gonna announce some things that people haven't seen some new games we're gonna give updates to some of the things that were on your list um, the other thing that gets me really excited is when I look forward over the next quarters which has always been my focus of how do we get a big game out every quarter at quality um, that things are lining up finally after some of the slowdown through COVID. I'm tired of talking about that. Um, but I can now see that we've got games coming every quarter that I think will surprise and delight um, our customers. We still have to deliver on the creative. We still have to deliver on the technical. Not every game we ship is for everybody. We know that. Like, I don't want to build – I'm not trying to build the – the, the one game to rule them all. We will have different creative takes and different, and we have a very diverse portfolio when you think about the stuff that Microsoft Game Studios builds. Uh, but I like- Lots of indies is what I'm hearing. That. I think for what we're trying to do as Xbox, which isn't to mimic any of the other platforms out there, it's create our own brand and identity. Um, the diversity of what we build, uh, hopefully will end up being, being a strength. But we have to do it at quality. We have to do it at time on time. And we have to- show people what they're actually going to see. We have yes. to show gameplay. And I think I'm kind of beyond that. Like we've got to put great games in the hands of our players. There's, there's nothing else. If, if I could follow up. Just keep waiting guys. On that. And, and I apologize. I do not want to dominate the conversation, but I, I make sure I want to follow up on the point of everything that you just said. And, and I'll take it from a personal standpoint. I've been a big believer in what Xbox has been building since about 2016, right? Xbox Play Anywhere, Game Pass, what you're doing with the Series X and S, just the cloud initiative, everything. I love all the services and the and the marketing message that you present to the community. But to your point, and f for me personally, I have Game Pass. My kids play it. We all love it. But you, like you even mentioned, delivering quality experiences every quarter, things like that, that's the sentiment that we get from the community right now that's the sentiment that i even have of it's great to talk about these things i think we've been talking about them ad nauseum it's like when are we going to get to that point of actually delivering these experiences like we i just ran down those games there's 20 something studios forget activision xbox game studios what it is today there's more than enough studios and titles out there that we're all anticipating and i think that is the, the common frustration that I see out there from people that it's like, we're tired of hearing, wait till next year. And I know I, you know that, but I know, it's like, I know. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> um, Bruh. This year started out well. Yeah. I yes, thought developer did. direct was received well. The team did a really good job. I thought with the messaging around set to your point around setting expectation. And I will even say, yes, I'm an, um, uh, I'm rooting for the home team here, but I'll say over delivering on expectations of that show versus what it was. 
I think the drop of Hi-Fi to say, hey, if you've if you've got Game Pass, you don't even have to buy the game. Like, just go click. People loved Hi-Fi. Something we don't talk a lot about that same month, Age 2 on console shipped. Truth be told, more people are playing Age... A bunch of people are playing Hi-Fi and Age 2, but Age yeah. 2 actually has more players right now. But all the fanfare goes to the highly rated... Kind yeah, of because Hi-Fi Rush is like five fucking... Five or six hours, bro. Of course people are going to play the RTS longer. Of new Hi-Fi, get that. Um... I know the review scores on Minecraft Legends, Minecraft, I think, always reviews somewhere kind of different than the top, but. What? Bruh. Hold on. Minecraft always reviews somewhere different than the top. Bro, people consider Minecraft to be one of the greatest video games ever fucking made. What? Minecraft is considered to be a damn near fucking masterpiece. Like, there are people who make the case that Minecraft is the greatest video game ever made because of the infinite potential that it offers. The fuck? Maybe the shitty fucking spinoff doesn't do well, but Minecraft itself is incredibly well received. Yo, what is the, uh, I'm just curious. Minecraft Metacritic. I'm just curious if Minecraft has a Metacritic score. Yeah, 93 must play. There you go. Universal acclaim. I'm just curious. How about the Xbox One edition? 84 or 88? Yeah, there you go. I don't think Minecraft is a game that reviews poorly. If I look at the reaction, I think we've already had over 3 million people playing. Yeah, I saw like it's launch week. It was the number one retail game on the Switch in Japan, which isn't always where Microsoft sits um, in terms of sales. So I, you know, I, I feel like momentum is building and then something like Redfall happens and but how is a game selling on the Switch versus the console a good thing? Like, you guys heard that, right? The only sales number that he actually mentioned is the fact that Minecraft Legends sold well physically on the Switch in Japan. <laughs> That's literally nothing to do with the fucking Xbox, bro. Okay, I still bought your console and I don't like Minecraft Legends. <laughs> like, shit. Minecraft Legends is not, like, anything I'm interested in. Xbox, the Xbox community should demand a, a lot from us as a team. Where we sit inside of Microsoft, we've got the resources to do better. Um, 2022 was, as you said, a very light year i think is what you said I, I might have other words for it um and then 2023 Empty. we started well just say it phil say what you think be honest that's what people want to hear come out and say it was fucking empty and and this was a knockback and but it's our job to go and deliver on the next games i can only look forward right i can sit here and wallow in in, in my own frustration uh, nah people don't like that minecraft legends game I'm pretty sure it's like pretty piss poorly received. Because Minecraft Dungeons, I think, did well. Yeah, 91% for Minecraft Dungeons. So anybody saying that Minecraft reviews mid tier, even for spinoffs, Minecraft Dungeons was actually pretty good. But Minecraft Legends. Mixed. 63%. And there are so few people playing it on Steam right now that it doesn't even track. I wonder if that's the case for uh, Minecraft Dungeons as well. Nope, it actually tracks. So there's more people on Steam playing Minecraft Dungeons at this point than Minecraft Legends. Yeah. It's just not a good game. Um, but all I can do is say, I'm going to do better tomorrow than I did yesterday. Um, and continue to support the teams and, and continue to grow. Um, 
But yeah, I think it is ours to prove that. I can say now, and everybody can already stop. I don't want to hear what Phil has to say about the future, and I, I kind of fully respect that point of view. Um, that we've got we've got Starfield coming, we've got Forza coming, we've got Hellblade coming. Like we've got collections of games. I'm seeing very good builds of Avowed and stuff. Like uh, we're in. Wait, like, wait, 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 wait games i'm seeing we've got forza coming we've got hellblade coming like we've got collections of games i'm that better be the marcus phoenix collection bro that shit better be the fucking marcus phoenix collection it's been too fucking damn long please for the love of god please Bro, I will flip my tune entirely if they actually release that shit. I will actually be positive about Microsoft if that gets announced. Seeing very good builds of Avowed and stuff like uh, we're in, like I can see it. Um, but until I, you have a controller in your hand and you're smiling from playing our games, none of my words should matter. Shout out to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Hun Oh, I hate this fucking guy. Honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Thanks to Honey, manually searching. This dude definitely uses a fucking butt plug and wears it into the office. He's so creepy, man. Funny. Paris was just talking about what have you learned. And I want to go back to that in the case of Redfall, even if it's just a case study for things like this when they happen in general. Because Redfall wasn't even the, first, the only game to stumble out of the gate this week. Look at the PC version of Jedi Survivor. What a mess. Unacceptable that that game shipped in the state that it, it was. And they must have known. It was like, oh, geez, the game has bugs. No. Oh, it's okay. Like, bro, what is this dude deflecting this shit? Talk about fuck. Why are we talking about fucking Star Wars? These motherfuckers will do everything except actually let Phil fucking talk about shit. They'll talk about some dumbass fucking Star Wars game. Like, dude, he has nothing to do with that shit. Shut the fuck up and move on to a topic that actually matters. No, you knew, and you shipped it anyway. So EA Respawn, for example, even on a massive title like that, it's going to be... See, it's not just you, Phil. Other developers do it too. A game of the year contender, we all know that, but like the PC version was unacceptable. My understanding is the PlayStation version's a bit of a mess as well. So these, we're still seeing this stuff happening on the regular. I, just in general, when things... I'm fascinated, as you might know, I'm fascinated by the subject of failure because I've experienced a lot of it in my own career and in, and in my personal life as well. And I think about... Wow. You really didn't give off that kind of vibe. ...about it a lot. The number one quote that I, that I stole from a person much smarter than me, I talk about it all the time when I talk about writing at creative seminars and things like that, is failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of it. But that's only true if you can get past feeling sorry for yourself when something fails. And Dude, are you his fucking therapist or are you going to ask him a fucking question? Holy shit, dude. Sift through the rubble and start figuring out, well, what can we learn? What can we learn from this failure? What can we take from this? What is teachable? And so I wanted to ask Phil both in oh, general and in the case the of Redfall. What the fuck is this guy I rambling on for? Gonna turn the game around, but like, do you have a formal process and what does it look like in the case? Do these motherfuckers just not know how to ask, hey, Phil, what did you learn from this failure? Whoa, I just did it in three seconds, guys. I didn't have to talk about how my life was a fucking failure and, you know. I'm a loser who talks about video games on YouTube in my 50s. It's a red for when something doesn't meet expectations. What is, is it something you get into right away or do you wait for the dust to settle? What is the post-mortem process? What is the what went wrong and how do we prevent this from happening again process look like at Xbox? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And I think I love your quote, Gary. I might lift that from you. Um, People don't have to care about this, but I'll talk about it. When we acquire studios, there's there's kind of there's games that are in development when we acquire a studio, and then there's things that are either really early in development or not even conceived yet. Uh, and I think we need to improve on engaging in games that are midway through production when they become part of Xbox. I do think there's a different expectation for a game and even a team when you've been third party and all of a sudden you become part of first party. There's a different expectation in terms of how you're going to perform on our console. Yeah, because a game that's owned by the company that makes your console, that game should take advantage of the hardware of the console you're selling. It's a crazy concept, I know. 
But yes, people expect higher quality games from first party developers because first party developers are subsidized by the consoles that their games are developed for. I think there's a different competitive set when people look at what this game is and the other games that they're going to say, hey, I want this game to feel as competitive as this other game on another uh, console platform in our case. And we didn't do a good job early on in engaging with Arcane Austin to... Why not? Dude, you just acquired them. You didn't send people in to go fucking observe what their company culture is like. You know, make sure deadlines are being met. Make sure the quality doesn't drop the fuck off because now everybody's getting a Microsoft paycheck so they don't have to fucking worry about job security. I mean, it never dawned on you to send somebody in there for a little bit of fucking oversight? Who really help them understand what it meant to be part of Xbox and part of first party and use some of our internal resources uh, to to help them and, and kind of move along that journey even faster. So we kind of left them to go work on the game. They're a very talented team. I love Why did you leave them? That team, and I still do, and I will totally bet on them to do another great game. Um, but when I, like, Matt, Yeah, we're stuck with them now. Matt Booty and Jamie Leader, who's running ZeniMax, and I sit down. I think we can engage earlier uh, with our different studios. And I do think there's a difference when we come in when the creative's already set on a game that's not washing our hands of any of the creative. Every game we ship from our teams is an Xbox game. Um, and so it's a full responsibility for it. Uh, but thinking about how our internal processes of dev assistance, um, even some of our internal ATG resources, what's the advanced technology group and how those work with our internal teams, I think we can do a better job with our in internal team. We did a better job with Starfield. Again, nobody should believe it until they're playing the game. But that game was earlier on in production, um, and it was easier for us to kind of swarm a bunch of people to go and kind of help with some of the technology on our platform and in in ensure that we're going to ship a, a quality experience there. And uh -huh. we should have been there for Harvey and the team earlier. I, I think that's on, on us. And then through the process... You know, it's an Unreal game. We have a bunch of studios that have done some really great work on Unreal over the years. And I think we were too late to, to help in that when they had certain issues that they were working through, which any team will. It's nothing to do with the specific engine. So what it sounds like is, oh, this game was already in progress. It was a hot fucking mess. I had two options. Either send people in to go in and fix it, which would have taken probably years to do. Or we can just get it the fuck out of the way and cut our losses. I think they chose to just get it the fuck out of the way and cut their losses. Uh, but we have a lot of experience, and we we needed to get on that earlier with the team, um, and we didn't do that. And there's that's not an excuse. And you asked just to kind of diagnose. So when the sixty frames per second issue came up. Um, we were definitely diving in. We had people from the coalition and people from rare and stuff looking both teams that have done some really great work with unreal to help us build a 60 FPS plan. But obviously that was a plan that had to be in place last fall um, in order for us to really be in a position to, to have it at launch. And I, I take. So you hear that, right guys, it would have taken them six months minimum to have this plan in place for 60 FPS, dude. So basically, it's going to be several months from now <laughs> before Redfall ever gets its 60 FPS mode. Months. <laughs> Absolute fucking months, man. Take that as learning, as painful as it is. But as you said, you know, it's, it, it's part of getting to success it, are those learnings and that diagnosis. There's a bunch of other stuff I could go into, but... Uh, then we end up with kind of dev doc, which I'm happy to do, but um, that, yeah. Well, Phil, we don't have much time with you, so I'm going to go around the table, give everybody one final question for Phil. I'm going to rattle off a couple quick ones with you, Phil. Of course, we talk about 60 frames, 30 frames. Should Xbox players expect a clear message this summer with Starfield with 30 and 60 frames? That's a big lesson learned, as you brought up. Should we expect that answer as clear as day? Yeah. Okay, that's a great one. Uh, another one. Well, they've only shown the game in 30 FPS, so get ready. Uh, you see a lot of conversation, of course. I want to praise you and the team for really elevating the PC side of this Xbox ecosystem. I think we've seen a lot of great strides 
in that. But when you see the community talk about the console side of things, do you think you've lost the focus or maybe put too much onto the PC side? Do you think that the console is still getting the console love that it deserves, whether it be the homepage update, achievements, of course, looking forward and using the power of this next gen? Do you think you guys have lost that focus or is it still there? And can we see more love on that side? Well, we'll definitely continue to focus on on making our console experiences. I saw that with the five most companies would have fired someone like Phil. But yeah, that's the thing. He's been at Microsoft, though, for like 20 years. So the dude is like deeply rooted in like their corporate culture. So they're not just going to get rid of him. He's probably got friends on the board and everything like that. So he's very much entrenched in that company. He's been there for decades. So it makes sense as great as it can be. I like the, the homepage refresh and some stuff. I will say this might be disruptive as well. Um, we have a different vision. You know, Paris talked about this. It's oh, play here the we games go. you want with the people you want anywhere you want. We want Xbox to be something that people who buy our console can feel like they're a member of, obviously who are playing on PC, who are playing on cloud, that they feel like, feel like they're full members um, of our ecosystem. Game Pass players can play um, on many different devices and, and we remain fully committed to that. Um, we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will up. Yes, there is. The win has always been in front of you from the very beginning. It's called the fucking Xbox 360, motherfucker. The Xbox 360 is your success story. You all moved so far away from that console and what the fuck it represented at the time. It was the place to go for third person, first person shooters. You had some of the best Western RPGs as timed exclusives on that console. You had a unique lineup of exclusive JRPGs on that console. You had a heavy focus on online, you know, gaming or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like interaction with your friends. It was the social network of the gaming world at the time. You had a consistent lineup of great first party or third party exclusive games that were some of the highest rated games of that entire fucking generation. <laughs> like you have the success story. You all threw away the identity of the Xbox for this fucking TV all in one entertainment system because Microsoft leadership <laughs> wanted to fucking make an Alexa before Alexa's existed. But it's like the recipe for success is right in front of them. What made the 360 so fucking special? It was the fact that they had some of the best fucking games of that entire generation on that console. It had a great online infrastructure. It was also the cheapest console that generation. So maybe drop the price of the Series X. I don't know. But... That was the thing is like the 360 was fucking awesome. And it's just like they've moved so far away from that identity. Like Gears of War is not Gears of War like it was on the 360. Halo is no longer fucking Halo at this point. You know, Forza's Forza, but Forza's getting old. You canned the studio that made Fable because you all tasked them with making the shitty fucking asymmetric multiplayer game instead of just making another Fable RPG. Like, <laughs> the hole that y'all are in was dug with your own fucking two hands. That's it. I don't know, man. It's just wild to me. Set a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace... You used to be first! and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, a very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will, um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team. That's on us, not on anybody else. Bro, you literally bought Bethesda. 
You were trying to buy Activision. What the fuck do you mean that Nintendo and Sony have deals that make it hard for Xbox to exist? That is the biggest cop-out ever, dude. What the fuck is Sony and Nintendo doing that makes it hard for Xbox to even fucking exist? That is such a cop-out. Greek focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, dude, final fantasy 15 launched on the Xbox and the PlayStation last generation. Final Fantasy 15 only sold 1 million copies on Xbox and sold 7 million copies on PlayStation 4. Final Fantasy is not a make or break game <laughs> for the fucking Xbox. Now keep in mind, last generation, Xbox also had an exclusivity deal with Square Enix. Bruh. When they had exclusivity for rise of the tomb raider so the same shit that phil's calling out he also was directly fucking responsible for as well in the past because they too used to have exclusivity deals with square enix i mean shit man epic games made gears of war on an exclusivity deal for microsoft <laughs> like the entire industry does third-party exclusivity deals. And Phil acting like Sony and Nintendo, participating in the same fucking business practice that Microsoft has used for decades at this point, is somehow preventing them from conducting business in the gaming industry when they're up here like trying to buy out entire fucking publishers is just comical to me. Like, it's absolutely fucking hilarious, dude. Games. Everything would turn. How the fuck can you claim that Nintendo and Sony are making it impossible for you to conduct business with the deals they make when you're literally out here trying to buy the largest publishers in the entire fucking business? That makes no sense. That is literally worse than the pot calling the kettle black because you're taking that shit to the next fucking level. I don't know, man. This is pretty wild to me. But the excuses are going to start flowing now. I silo over the five most com. Oh, wait, no, I read that shit. No double dipping. My bad. Turn around. It just can't double dip. It's not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift. In what? Everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're gonna see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost. Yes, you will. If people actually have a fucking desire to play the games that are on Xbox, people might actually buy one, even if they already have a PlayStation 5. See, this is the thing, is if there's enough games on the platform, even when I was a kid, like, perfect fucking example the only reason i bought a fucking 360 is because of gears of war i had a fucking shitty little ps3 you know my broke begging ass back in fucking middle school couldn't afford a fucking 360 so i was stuck with my playstation 3 but because 360 had so many fucking amazing games on it Guess what I wanted to go fucking buy as soon as I could actually save up the money? An Xbox! Wow! What a novel concept. So it's almost like if you have quality shit to play on your platform, even if someone already has an existing console, they still might go pick up your game console. Like, prime example, the Switch. The Wii U was absolute fucking dog shit. Sold like dog shit. Had terrible fucking games. Like, you'd go a whole year without Nintendo releasing a game on the Wii U. Well, guess what? The Switch has cranked out consistently great first-party content from Nintendo, and it's done incredibly well. And guess what? Most people that have a Switch probably also have a PlayStation. 
So what do you mean it doesn't affect market share by not having good games on your platform? Because if you have good games on your platform, even if people already have a different platform, they may go out and buy your platform regardless and just play those games they're interested in. I mean, let's keep it a buck fitty here, guys. Gaming is not really that expensive. $500 for a console in 2023 or $300 in the case of the Series S is like literally a trip like to what? A fucking amusement park? That's nothing. 500 bucks? You know, to go to a fucking amusement park for like two tickets, buying food and shit, you're probably spending 400 to 500 bucks anyway. Like this is pocket change at this point for most people. 500 bucks is not that big a deal. You're telling me that if you weren't putting out like three to four amazing games per year that everybody was dying to like play, always talking about, that people wouldn't go out and buy an Xbox? I do not fucking believe that shit for a second. Like, why are you buying these studios if you don't think people buy consoles because of good games? Like, what was the point of acquiring Bethesda? If people don't fucking buy consoles for good games, like why did you buy them and make their games exclusive? If people don't buy consoles because of good games, why are Bethesda games exclusive to the Xbox? Why did you make Bethesda games console exclusives if those games don't fucking move the needle when it comes to people's purchasing decisions? The logic does not line up here. If this was actually true, every single one of Microsoft's games would be third party at this point. Rostom V2 with the two sounds like Activision posturing. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. We're going to have to deal with that for the next year or at least until uh, July when the deal probably falls apart the worst generation to lose in the Xbox one generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race. I think doesn't really, I don't think anybody's saying you're going to win the console race. I mean, like he said, people already built their digital library. I've talked about this a hundred times, bro. Like, even when the consoles were coming out, like, Sony was probably going to win because who the fuck's going to abandon their game library? But the thing is, dude, it's like he's basically, we're just in a no-win situation. There's nothing we can do. You can do better. You may not win the fucking console war, but you can still sell better. Like, you may not get outsold 4-1 to one anymore. Maybe it'll be 2-1 to one instead. Or maybe it'll be like fucking 1.5 to 1. Like third place does not necessarily mean a bad position in the gaming industry. You're still potentially making tens of billions of dollars a year. Like, <laughs> it's just... I don't fucking know, man. It just literally sounds like, oh... My job is so hard. There's no hope. We just need to give up. It doesn't matter if we release good games or not. You know, Sony's just so much better than us. Cue the violin. Microsoft. I don't know, man. I just hate this pity party bullshit. I silently with the 10 Sony success started a very long time ago when the PS3 slim launched and you had God of War 3, Uncharted 2, Last of Us. There's trust to be had there. Nintendo rebounded after the travesty of the Wii U. Exactly. And guess what? The PlayStation 2 was what? The best selling console of all fucking time. And guess who beat the PlayStation 3? The Xbox 360. So this whole attitude that you can't fucking win is pitiful. The thing is, is Microsoft shot themselves in the fucking foot with the Xbox One, and they're paying the price for that ever fucking since. 
which is only their own fault because everybody expected the Xbox to win that generation until Microsoft just, you know, completely shit the bed. I don't know. It's just basically what this sounds like is I have my excuse for not releasing good games. It doesn't matter anyway. DJ Aftershock with a two. Does this sound like a person who cares? Uh, nope. <laughs> Sounds like somebody who's worried he's about to get fired, in all honesty. Really lay into the reality of most people. Like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. And their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen when you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft. Like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world. Nobody's saying you're going to suddenly become the number one selling console overnight, but you can still compete and gain back some market share. What we're witnessing now is like y'all are like happy being the gaming industry's doormat. World where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. It's not going to happen. No shit. No one's saying that that's going to happen. I mean, if anybody actually thinks like one game comes out, then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God, bro, I got to go sell my fucking console so I can buy an Xbox to play one video game. Like, duh, that's not realistic. But when you have enough of those 11 out of 10 games, people be, may be like, well, I already have a PlayStation, but shit, man, there's a bunch of stuff on Xbox I want to check out. I may go pick one of those up. Oh, they're only 300 bucks. Fuck it. That is a very likely scenario. That is a very fucking likely scenario. It just, this sounds like a cope, bro. This is like pure fucking cope. Um, so what we have to do, and we have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt. So, so like we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up of just being a better green version of what the blue guys do. No. Um, I'm just going to say... We do not want you to be Sony. So stop making games like Hellblade 2. Nobody wants Xbox to be fucking PlayStation, especially me. But what we do want is consistent quality like PlayStation has. PlayStation has managed to like turn their first party studios into a well-oiled machine that produces like the best games in that particular genre that they release in. I want the same from Xbox again, where Gears of War is leading the third-person shooter genre, where Halo is one of the best shooters on the fucking market, where, you know, you have, like, Western RPGs like Fable that are actually really fucking good. Like, that's not crazy in my opinion. I don't know, dude. You can still do your own thing and have your own identity, but it just seems like Xbox has no fucking identity anymore. They took that identity that they had with the 360, which was like the shooter Western RPG box, and they tossed that shit out the fucking window. They completely forgot what made them popular. Hey, like, there's not a like, look at Titanfall, for example, man. Like, even on the Xbox One, which was such an unpopular console, Titanfall did incredibly well for them. You guys are a shooter box. Focus on the shit. That is your bread and butter. Make better shooters than anyone else on the fucking market. And that can be your identity. Like, what does PlayStation have? I mean, I guess they have Bungie now, which, holy fuck. <laughs> the irony there. But, dude, you have id Software. You have Machine Games. You have 343, which you let run fucking wild with zero fucking oversight for however many years. Like, it's just crazy. 
I mean, what the fuck is the coalition doing nowadays? They're making open world Gears of War games. Like, bruh. Who asked for that shit? A win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Pass, with the stuff we do with xCloud, and the way we build our games. Sorry, it was a little long-winded. No, that was perfect. No. And unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Phil. I know that we have a hard out here, but I want to end it with something positive, Phil, because I've gotten cranky, Phil, this whole episode, <laughs> and I freaking love you, and I appreciate you being on and being hard with us, but I do need something positive out of you, Phil. So before you leave, tell me and the Xbox community something positive that you're looking forward to, that you're playing anything fun to bring a smile to your face <laughs> dude i'm a, i'm an optimist like uh, you know i i will always see i'll use this for you the gap between the trees i'll always see the fresh pow like this is why i'm here um i love the games that are ahead of us i'm having a great time playing the games that are available in game pass today i look in ravenlock coming benedict's here um, like I, I just love playing video games. One of the things I am excited about. What did he just say? Playing the games that are available in Game Pass today. I look in Ravenlock coming. Benedict's Ravenlock Benedict here. Um, like I, I just. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck are those? Love playing video games. One of the things I am excited about um, is the Rog Ally. Something I've got my hands on. If people have had a chance to play with that. And I just love the fact that here's another device that people are going to get to go experience great games on. Whether it's Why don't you make some of those great games? Dude. <laughs> you all should make some of those great games that people could experience. Your Steam Deck or that or your Xbox. You know, I see the growth in video games. I get to spend time with creators who are excited about the opportunity that they have. I get to go play some amazing games. Some of those in Game Pass, some of those not. Um, and I just think this, this, the gaming space has never been more diversely creative than it is right now. And it's uh, a privilege to be a part of it. I love hearing that. Paris, end us with this episode. What do you got to say? And let's get out of here. Yeah, just, just a quick statement as we get out of here. First and foremost, Phil, thank you for doing this. This is clearly not the conversation we thought we were going to have when we scheduled this, but we do appreciate your candor and, and just being it being 100% honest about the current state of what's going on with Xbox. Um, I am hopeful in the future we can have more conversations about what ID at Xbox is doing in their initiatives, Game Camp New Orleans, things like that, that are more positive and enabling more creators because that's what I really wanted to talk about in this episode. But as we go into June, I am looking forward to the showcase. I am looking forward to the reveals that are coming. And, you know, I, I, I still think the future is bright for Xbox and Xbox Game Studios and what you'll have to present. This is a bump in the road, but uh, I still think the future is going to be bright. So, again, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, Paris. All right. Well, on behalf of my two gaming dads, thank you, Phil Spencer, for joining God, us. God, this, this guy's so kind of fucking funny cringe. Of course, thank you all for tuning in my and two hanging gaming out with dads. us. We will see you next week. And Team Xbox will see you in June what a with a big bro. Xbox game <laughs> What a fucking weirdo. And, of course, that deep dive into Starfield. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you back next week. My two gaming dads. Bruh. And like all the comments are probably like, Mike absolutely crushed hosting that interview with Phil. I mean, that was some of his best interviewing. Wait, that, I mean, this was some of the best interviewing talent I've seen in years. Was incredibly respectful, but did ask all the perfect. No, they didn't. Bro, they did not fucking push back on anything. They literally were giving these fucking, you know, like, oh, my life was hard and filled with failure. It was like, nobody fucking cares. Some of the best in today's video game journalism. Oh, God. Dog. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Let's see. Let's see if Crap Gamer's coping again. Yeah, here we go. 
Phil Spencer admits defeat to Sony and is disappointed in Xbox, please don't switch to PS5. Phil Spencer just gave an interview with the kind of funny game folk, and I gotta say, I love what I heard from them. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Phil Spencer didn't pull any punches. He really came oh out and gave God. his honest thoughts on things like Redfall, on things like frame rate, on the showcase, on the disappointment that he felt. I think that this is really a genuine thing. And I know a lot of people look at me and go, oh, well, you really like the console war or whatever like that. I actually don't. I prefer just to be able to play games and just be able to have fun with my games. The problem is, is I get invigorated by the hate that Xbox gets. What that, what I mean by that is, you guys might notice a little bit of change on the channel. and that's Crap, you used to contribute to that hate towards Xbox. What changed? Why did you come back home to Papa Phil after becoming a full-blown PlayStation fanboy? What made you uh, have your change of heart? That's because I see a lot of the same hatred towards Xbox that I did back in 2013, 2014 when I started doing this, right? So in a decade time, nothing's really changed. Like Microsoft has made all these brilliant changes, uh, went totally away from brilliant. what the Xbox One did, the missteps there, and yet they still get even more hate in some instances for some of the things that happens. But again... This is really good to see they that you have a boss like Phil Spencer Xbox going out one. there apologizing, saying, hey, I'm disappointed in this stuff as well. He apologized for Redfall, uh, claims that Xbox was expecting better reviews. So, again, uh, Xbox boss Phil Spencer has apologized for the launch state of its latest big first-party release and claimed that developer Arcane will work on improvements for the game. Now, the first major Xbox exclusive from Bethesda launched this week with a number of issues and has generally been received poorly with a 62 score on Metacritic. Now, the co-op shooter has user scores 59. of just 2.6 and 1.9 out of 10. <laughs> Addressing Redfall's disappointing reception in a new interview with Kind of Funny Games, Microsoft's head of gaming claimed the platform holder did not expect such a negative reception to the game, citing internal mock reviews which allegedly suggested it could have received much higher scores so again i like to point that out because again if you look at some of the reviews that this game has there some of the reviews are like nines or eights and people really love the game and also there are two reviews that are a nine or an eight and one of them calls redfall a masterpiece with a full and vibrant open world Bruh. i know people that are playing through the game every day and they're absolutely loving the game. So I'm not saying that it's a game that should be higher than a 62. Obviously, people have problems with it. I'm just saying it's easy to pile on to Xbox. And when stuff like this happens, um, it's a real shame, you know. And I think that Phil owning up to it really kind of makes... Uh... Ben with the 5, honestly, I think people buy console for COD. Well, about $20 million on each side typically do. Yeah. But there's a whole, like, that's the thing is Call of Duty has like a 20% attach rate, I think, on PlayStation. So there's another 80% that don't. But, I mean, yeah, most people buy, a, like, most of the casual market buys a console for, like, you know, Madden, FIFA, Call of Duty, Fortnite, that type of shit. But people do also buy supplementary gaming devices like the Switch or a second console. So there's a market of people who, yeah, maybe play like one or two games a year, but there's also a very large market of people who are like hardcore gamers who buy like a shit ton of games per year. And that number is actually growing. There's actually less casuals each year. Like it's kind of progressing to the point where gaming is becoming so mainstream that we're seeing less and less of those like typical like Call of Duty casual types. Waterboy with the two, Redfall, and Xbox is old news now. It feels like it. There's been a lot of news about it, like shit. Um, all the difference in the world. And this wasn't the only thing that he said. I mean, being disappointed, but also he kept it extremely real. I think that it really shows the difference between like a Phil Spencer and a Jim Ryan uh, that he came out and said stuff like this because 
like, could you imagine Jim Ryan doing an interview like this just on a channel? And he doesn't need to. And, and answering real tough. He's working. <laughs> Jim Ryan is leading the PlayStation division into new fucking heights for Sony. Why does he need to get on a podcast and explain himself? Questions like, hey, haven't you guys done, done a first party showcase in two years? Why haven't you guys done that? I, I think that, um, you know, this is like a real type situation where Phil really shows his strong suits um, sort of as uh, sort of what's going on versus PlayStation. Uh, he said, there's nothing more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. I've been part of it for a long time. I obviously work on Xbox. I'm head of the business. I have a lot of friends and get a lot of feedback and just kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed in, uh, and I'm disappointed. I'm upset with myself. He also added, we do mock reviews for every game that we launch, and this is a double digits lower than what we thought we would be with this game through those. This is one of the disappointing things. We would never strive to launch a game that we thought was going to review in the low 60s. It's not part of our goals. If you look at our review scores from the past, and this Timothy is... Timothy Marco with a two. Mr. Ryan, could you please explain the success of the place? Exactly. It's like Jim Ryan doesn't have to go answer for why their, you know, first $70 AAA next-gen only game turned out to be a fucking 59 on Metacritic. Like, Sony doesn't have these issues. This is not a defense at all. I think the teams have done a better job in upping the level of quality of games that we've shipped, and this game was significantly below our internal metrics compared to where it actually reviewed. But that's not on anybody but us. We have to own that. Spencer also claimed that Bethesda and developer Arcane will continue to support Redfall, as Rare has done with Sea of Thieves, another first-party co-op title, which was initially criticized at launch. In terms of our commitment to the game, absolutely. The team at Arcane is taking a near-term feedback, we're w working on the 60 frames per second update. We have a good timeline for that, and we're going to continue to work on the game. We've shown commitment to games like Sea of Thieves and Grounded to continue to go and build games. But I also know that these are $70 games, and I'm going to take full responsibility for launching a game that needs to be great. We let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game, but we will continue to strive on. You have to do that. That's what creativity is all about. Now, later in the interview, he was asked to reflect on lessons that Xbox could take from Redfall, and Spencer said he believes a platform holder should have done more early in the game's development in terms of providing assistance to Arcade and setting expectations. You know, guys, I'm just sitting here thinking about this shit, and maybe we'll start to see something. Like, I think it's a possibility. Because, like, think about 343, for example. Once people realized their jobs were on the fucking line, what happened with Halo Infinite? All of a sudden, the content started flowing out like a fucking waterfall. Like, Halo Infinite got more content in the weeks following the firings than it got in its entire fucking lifespan. So, think about it this way. Maybe if Phil Spencer thinks his job is on the line now, you know, maybe the whip will, in fact, start fucking cracking over at Xbox Game Studios. And we might actually get some good shit now. Because the thing is, is when people feel like, you know, I guess the fucking blade approaching their neck. You know, they start to act frantically and start reevaluating shit, so... I mean, he literally acknowledged in that video that someone different than him could be sitting in his position pretty soon. So I think in the back of his mind, I think that was like a slip up. I think in the back of his mind, like he's very worried about his job security. So maybe that'll light like some fucking flame under his ass and get him to like actually get some stuff pumped out. Because believe it or not, guys, I would actually like Microsoft's games to be good because typically I prefer Microsoft games over PlayStation ones. So, believe it or not, I would actually like to enjoy Gears of War and Halo again like I used to. For what a first-party game needs to deliver. He said, and I quote, When we acquire studios... Or for, like, a game like Avowed to actually be good. Like, bro, it's been t way too long without Elder Scrolls, so... I mean, I guess an Obsidian version of Elder Scrolls could be really fucking good, but... It's been three years, man. <laughs> no fucking updates. Studios 
there are games that are in development and then there are things that are either really early in development or not even conceived yet i think we need to improve in engaging with games that are midway through production when they come a part of xbox i do think there's a different expectation for a game and the team when you've been third party and all of a sudden you become first party there's a different expectations in terms of how you're going to perform on our console and i think there's a different competitive set when people look at this game is and say hey i want this game to feel as competitive as this other game on another console platform and we didn't do a good job of that early on engaging arcane austin to really help them understand what it meant to be part of xbox and part of first party and use some of our internal resources to help them move along that journey even faster we left them to work on the game they're a very talented team i love that team and i still do and i will totally bet on them to do another great game uh so yeah he's basically confirming here that, that by the time microsoft bought this team they were you know midway point of development of the game and they didn't really offer them a, a bunch of support now i will say that's sort of the opposite of what they've done with bethesda and starfield as they sent um engineers to actually help optimize the game for xbox that could have been something that they did with this team as well or let another team assist them um and i hope that that's something that they do in the future so you know again like it's just one of those things where i think this is interesting but when xbox game studios had matt booty um <laughs> And Zenimax president Jamie Leader sat down. I think we can engage earlier with our different studios. And I think there's going to be a difference when we come in and the creative is already set on the game. And that's not washing our hands. Every game we ship from our teams is an Xbox game. So we take full responsibility for it. Spencer also said that he believes the platform holder did a better job with Bethesda's other 2023 release. The upcoming sci-fi RPG Starfield in terms of assisting development because the game was earlier in production when xbox acquired it we should have been there for redfall co-creative director harvey smith and the team earlier i think that's on us and then through the process it's an unreal engine game Todd we have Howard a bunch of studios that have done some really great work <laughs> oh, no. on unreal over the Dude. years and i think hell no nah, not fucking todd although phil has been outpacing todd howard when it comes to sweet little eyes recently so we were too late to help uh, in that we had certain issues. Finally, Spencer said that while there are clearly things that can be improved in on Xbox Game Studios product delivery process, he won't force development teams to stick to making the type of games that they have a track record for. Redfall is a vampire looter shooter, a genre that's new to creator Arcane, which is known for its critically acclaimed immersive sim series, Dishonored. I kind of revisit our pro Sim series? Dude, there's nothing simulation about fucking Dishonored. <laughs> Who the fuck wrote that shit? Process, I think back to the announcement of 60 frames per second, and then we weren't shipping 60 frames, and that kind of was our punch on the chin, rightfully so, a couple of weeks ago. And then seeing the game come out and the critical response was not what we wanted, and it's disappointing. So I kind of picked myself up. What can we learn? How can we get better? One thing I'll fight is kind of what went wrong. There's clearly quality and execution things we can do, but one thing I won't do is push against the creative aspirations of our teams. I know a lot of people will say, hey, you've got t teams. Teams know how to do one kind of game. Just force them to go do one kind of game, and they have yes. a proven track record, and I'm just not a believer in that. Maybe that means I'll under-deliver for some of our fans out there, but when a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to go do Grounded, when Tango wants to do Hi-Fi Rush, when everybody probably thought they were doing Evil Within 3, I want to give teams the creative platform to go and put... I thought Evil Within flopped, so I wasn't really expecting them to make Evil Within 3. Push their ability, push their aspirations. But I also need to have a great selection of games that continue to come that surprise and delight our fans. And we under delivered on that. And for that, I apologize. It's not what I expect, not what I want. But you know, it's ours to deliver. So again, he's out there being as honest as he can be. Um, I feel like it's pretty clear at this point that, you know, he makes a really good point. Like people will say it's damage control, but he's right. Like Tango could have done evil within three but they did hi-fi rush which was great and you know obsidian did grounded which i know a lot i don't like people don't talk about it much but that game is great you know it, you know it might not be your yeah. thing specifically but it is pretty damn great i'm so glad obsidian put out fucking honey i shrunk the kids and pentiment instead of avowed or fallout new vegas too.
And, you know, it is nice to see that these teams are able to do these other types of games. And um, I think Phil is right. Like, he also said something like, we're going to ship games that score in the 80s. We're going to ship games that score in the 60s. And if you're afraid of that, then you're, you're in the wrong business. And what I think he meant by that... Didn't Griffin hate New Vegas? Yes. But the thing is, is people fucking love that shit. And it would be an immediate W for Xbox. Like, the second I would have acquired Bethesda and I already had Obsidian, that would have been the first announcement I would have made that day, is development has begun on Fallout New Vegas 2. That's how you build hype. That's how you get people excited. That's how, you know, you bring people to your platform and give them, like, something to actually, you know, point to and be like, oh, look. This is a direct result of Microsoft's acquisitions. They bought Obsidian and Bethesda, and now we get another game that we all loved in the past. Unless you're me who didn't like it. But yeah. That is, you can't be afraid to take risks. You have to go out there. You have to take risks. You have to be able to um, have some of those things that maybe won't score as good as you hoped. And I nothing should be scoring a 59 that comes out of Microsoft, dude. A game getting a 60 means it's like fundamentally flawed or broken. That is not acceptable no matter what the fucking game is like taking a risk on. That just means it's a fucking bad game. I, th I think he's 100% right there, you know? I mean, no. look at Sony, for instance, and I gave this as a, as a perfect example. It doesn't get any better than this example. Days Gone was a good game i liked it it was a 71 rated game that's not a great rating sony a 71 is not a 59 bro a 71 is not a 59 holy shit hold on let me see what is days gone yeah it's got a 71 but an 8.4 user score dude People actually like that game. The user score is great. I th wasn't that the game that got not actually, you know, Days Gone is one of those examples of the fucking uh, reviewers. Didn't they knock that game for having a gruff white dude as the protagonist? That was that game, right? That was the game where the reviewers bitched that the main character was a, uh, you know, white straight male. So, yeah, I think the journalists all shat on that game because of, you know, my white straight male main character. So, yeah, that's a prime example of just bullshit journalism. So, yeah, I would say the user score is way more valid in that case. Like, they had an 8.4 on Metacritic. What's that on Steam? I'm curious. Days gone. Um, Let's see. It's got a 92% on Steam. Yeah, that is literally a perfect example of fucking, you know, journalism. Redfall is not a case of journalism, guys. Redfall is fucking bad. 31%. So, yeah, there's a little bit little bit of a different situation there. When user scores and review scores from critics line up, typically there's, you know, smoke, there's fire. But when a critic, like, knocks a game for having a white male character and then the user score is incredibly high, typically that's still a good game. But in the case of Redfall, dude, nobody fucking likes this game, critic or people that actually are playing it. Will not let them do a sequel because of the possibility of a low-rated game. So they have to go and do something else. Now, again, that's a problem. I feel like you have to be able to take chances and take risks. I'm going to link this. You guys can check it out. You guys can even check out the full interview with Phil. I think it was really, really good. I liked what he had to say. Profit with a two, but Griff, it'll be four times games, eight times the detail. It just works. Let's go, man. That's what we need. 
In Isol, where the five days gone had problems for the first six hours and everything got significantly better. It was weird. Yeah, I don't know. I just remember that was the game that a bunch of critics knocked the game for having a boring white male character. Like, there was a shit ton of reviews that quoted exactly that. And that's why they, like, knocked it down. They said the story was boring because it's hard to picture yourself as a gruff white dude. And it was like... Bruh. Okay, but if I'm, like, some fucking cheery black lesbian, then <laughs> everything's okay. Like, of course everybody's not going to be able to relate to every single fucking character like a self-insert, dipshits. Like, <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. Journalism. Yeah, y'all heard the fucking uh, little thing on my phone? That's my uh, bedtime alert. Um, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Let me know what you guys think. Rack them up. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Crap Gamer out. Right now, we're hot off the heels of Microsoft having honestly two pretty damn. I don't know who this guy is, but I kind of feel disturbed. I, dude, I just do not like face cam videos. I don't understand why people opt for them. Personally. What is this? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, bro, he does kind of look like a fat Ed Sheeran. Shit. That's what he looked... I was thinking like he looked like somebody, but Ed Sheeran spot on. Fortunately, Microsoft has had a little bit of a run of, I would say, bad news, bad luck, uh, maybe a little bit of both. I think that a little bit of both plays kind of a factor in what's going on with Xbox right now. And also the fa fact that even though I don't like to wear the tinfoil hat, I have to... Yeah, right. I kind of say that it does at times seem like the media is against Xbox and a lot of the sites and social media in general tends to be against Xbox in a weird sort of way. Uh, this is no more prevalent than right now, right? I was there in 2013 when Xbox was getting all the hate. It is just as hateful right now in 2023, 10 years later. And all it took was for the first mediocre game that they've released in the last three years. So, <laughs> what world is crap living in that this is the first mediocre game they've released in fucking three years it's one of the few games they've released in three years but i assure you there's been plenty of mediocre ones oh so you can release solidly reviewed games time after time after time after time and then it's going to get all negated by one mediocre game release which is utterly ridiculous in my opinion Utter and it's not mediocre crap it's trash really ridiculous uh with that being said this couldn't come at a worse time for microsoft because i think when you look at what sony's doing sony is 100 percent relying on the third-party deals that they've made for some of those timed exclusives and uh, whatever. And Microsoft has those type of deals as well. I don't think they have anything maybe on the same level as a Final Fantasy or whatever, but they still have some pretty popular games lined up as a console exclusive for Xbox. And so seeing that go forward or seeing these get delayed is a bit of a bummer. And we saw some of these delays last year affect like in the, the terms of Stalker 2, for instance, which is a Xbox console exclusive. So, you know, again, nice to see that Mike Isaac Himmler with the 12 months. Sony has Spider-Man 2 and Final Fantasy 16, which will be great. Agreed, man. I'm really looking forward to Final Fantasy 16. That game looks absolutely fucking phenomenal. Microsoft is doing some nice things here, but at the same time, it's really looking like Microsoft has, uh, you know, this uphill battle to go. You know, Microsoft is committed to doing better, and Microsoft has done better, in my opinion. Uh, you could just look at it. I believe I talked about this a little bit the other day. Uh, the games that they've released, even though they were technically 
forced to release multi-plats and even in some cases PlayStation exclusives for a year, those games were pretty well received and even some Game of the Year nominees and I expect them to get right back on track. They'll fix up Redfall. I think it'll be fine. I don't think that it's <laughs> a great game by any means, but anyway... This is a weird situation because Arc 2 is a game that is going to be Xbox console exclusive and was just delayed, possibly even delayed till 2025, and yet we're only in 2023. So they say that the 2025 thing isn't a real thing, but I still think this is just more bad news because people are going to tie a console exclusive with, uh, even though it's a third-party game, with Xbox and Game Pass and, you know, say those type of things. So as recently as this year, Studio Wildcard announced an ARC 2 delay uh, to the end of 2024 for the betterment of the final product. Dude, why does Xbox pay for exclusivity for, like, some of the worst fucking games in the industry? They paid for Scorn. They paid for High on Life. Like, what was the other one, too? I don't fucking remember. But, like, they have, like, the worst third-party deals in the fucking industry, dude. The absolute fucking worst deals in the industry when it comes to third-party partnerships. Oh, Crossfire X. That's the other one. I thought of it. Got it. Crossfire X. Like, what? <laughs> now Arc 2? Like. Bruh and the team's well-being. The most recent delay was attributed to the developer's relatively uh, lack of familiarity with Unreal Engine 5. If this latest information from Digital Domain does wind up being indicative of Arc 2's launch plans, it would be the fourth Arc 2 delay since the sequel is announced, and the second in about a month. What could also be happening here is simply that Arc 2 is technically coming out in spring 2025, but it'll arrive in early access in late 2024, as originally planned. That logic would technically check out with official statements from Studio Wildcard and this new report from Digital Domain. Still, that wouldn't explain why it sounds like Studio Wildcard is out of the loop on its own game. And again, it's equally possible this was a typo blown out of proportion and that the game will arrive next year, as previously announced. So again, it looks like Arc 2 is going to be facing a delay and while this isn't a first party xbox game it is uh you know just one of those things that people are going to look at it and go oh well that's typical xbox things are delayed things you know it's so silly to me the way that people kind of silly. react to this stuff right like i just feel like it is it's like we're past that silliness factor then why are you sick of it crap oh wait your title's just clickbait it's almost as silly as the Xbox One days where we would see, uh, you know, people counting grass uh, on on GTA 5 or whatever, you know, or it was that that was super. So I thought that was a joke, right? Like legitimately, people were arguing that GTA 5 on PS4 had more grass than the Xbox One <laughs> version. And that was a reason to get the PlayStation version of the game. The utterly ridiculousness of it, right? It sounds ridiculous. So for me, I mean, technically, it was when better. When I see something like that, and I go, you know, listen, this is like a strange, strange situation that we're in. You know, Microsoft is getting a lot of hate right now, and I feel like that's extremely unfortunate. But also, I feel like Microsoft is getting unnecessary hate and un unwarranted hate, right? Like they just are. This is like has nothing to do with Microsoft. This is a third-party deal. This is a Game Pass thing. Game developing is hard. I don't know if any of my listeners out there are developers. Probably not. But it's <laughs> yeah. difficult to do. I don't think a developer would stick around for the bullshit on display on this channel. Like, could you imagine actually being a game developer and listening to someone like Crap Gamer describe what your job entails? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I would stick around. This would be like some fucking head of like a Wall Street bank listening to a fucking Redditor explain how fucking markets work. And it's also difficult to kind of lock down when you're going to actually release a game. So it's always a constant or even thing, a better constant comparison. Thing. This would be like Phil Spencer listening to fucking uh, crap gamer on how Xbox should have been uh, run just two years ago when he was a... Uh, 
anti Xbox channel. Moving in flux. And so we continue to see things pop. Grifster won't resell his hail. Oh, I already resold that. Up and crop up, and people I made a quick 200 on that. Just get kind of uh, ticked off and annoyed or whatever. I feel like Microsoft is doing the best that they can, and it just seems like no matter what they do, they will never ever get the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and like I said, you can look at Redfall and, and, and hate it all you want, but as far as I'm concerned, this is their first miss in like three years' time. Like, whether you like all the other games that they've released, they're not all AAA or whatever, but, you know, Wasteland 3, Ghostwire Tokyo is like an 82 on Xbox, um, Deathloop is an 89, uh, you have Forza Horizon uh, 5, that's a 92, Halo Infinite is an 87, I get that Halo Infinite isn't in the best state, um, you know, last year, I think the Halo Infinite campaign may be in 87, but the most important portion of the game, which is the multiplayer, is definitely not a fucking 87. It's actually gotten much better this year, but I don't, I get that it's, that it wasn't in the best state last year. They didn't have the content ready, but at launch, I felt like, you know, you could play through the campaign. It was a really good soft reboot of the campaign. I thought the multiplayer was fun for what I played with it. But again, like every Halo, like I've never been a huge Halo multiplayer person. So so you're not a real Halo player. So I play some multiplayer. I play the campaign. You are not the primary audience of Halo because the multiplayer audience is the primary audience for Halo. I move on. It's what I do. I did that with this Halo. I thought it was a good experience. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I thought the campaign was fine, but the multiplayer sucked cock. Like, I can understand if you're a, a Halo aficionado and you you live and die the multiplayer. Yeah, you probably weren't happy this, this past year. But overall, I thought, especially at launch, it was a really good game. You know, they launched Hi-Fi Rush, which I thought was amazing. Uh, you know, and I think Redfall is pretty average. But I think possibly in time... People will look at that game and through no. updates and things like that. And yes, it should have been, you know, launched at a better state, no doubt about it. But I think in time, people might start to look at that game like they do Sea of Thieves, right? Sea of Thieves was pretty bare bones. I love that game, but other people, uh, maybe not so much, right? So I, I just kind of wanted to point that out that, you know, it's a, we're in these different types of situations. This comes at a bad time for sure, but it's not the end all be all. You have to learn from the mistakes and kind of move on and not tie every little... Dude, I have 2,400 hours in Halo MCC. I like Halo multiplayer. So, yeah, you could say I'm a Halo SWAT, I guess. ...thing that happens to Xbox, right? There's some things that are just genuinely beyond the control. And so it's unfortunate when you start to see people kind of look at it uh, in, in this sort of way and as such a negative anyway, in my humble opinion. So, uh, you know, I, I think Microsoft still has more work to do, but I also think that they've done a lot of great things and people aren't really giving them the credit that I think is deserved. They get the credit for the bad things, but never any of the credit for the good things. Have you noticed that? Hi-Fi Rush apparently had nothing to do with them. But Redfall has everything to do with that. Like, keep it consistent if you're going to give them. Yes, because they still chose to release high f- or they chose to release both. Oh, my God. Both were in development for about the same amount of time. Both released around the same time. But when Xbox chose to release both of them, they had the option to delay it or not. So, yeah, it is their fault that Redfall released in a terrible fucking state. Because they chose to push it out the door. Hate? Give them the love too, right? It's so nonsense and so biased to do it the other way around. With that being said, I'm Crab Gamer. Please like the video. Uh, let me know what you like to see on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Rack them up. Crab Gamer out. But yeah, for anyone who thinks that, uh, you know, 2,400 hours. And that game is like crazy. I already have 727 hours <laughs> in fucking Call of Duty. So it's not completely unimaginable. I mean, shit, bro. How long has MCC been out since 2014? So I have 1,400 hours on Steam for MCC and then 1,000 on the Xbox console. So, you know, it's been out for nine years.
Bro has more hours on COD than I have on my entire Steam library. Bruh. <laughs> but yeah, I got lots of time on Call of Duty. Nobody can claim that I don't like fucking shooters, man. Nobody can claim that I don't play my games, bro. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. It's 3.13 for me. I'm going to go to sleep. Hopefully, y'all have a great Friday and start to your weekends. We got, what, the iDubs video to watch tomorrow. And then we'll see from there. I mean, I got, like, some other stuff. Where did I write that shit down? Yeah, we got the skill up review of Redfall, which somebody said was worth watching. And then a couple other things as well we can check out. But hope you all have a uh, great rest of your week and start to your weekend. Big ups to everybody in the chat. Appreciate the support. Tomorrow also, I'll have the uh, PS5 hooked up. So we will play some fucking hashtag greatness, bro, in the form of Ghost of Tsushima. So, yeah, I'll get that up plugged in, and we should be good to go on that. So... Have a wonderful night, everyone, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace out.